We have some teas from Taiwan. We have some Georgian teas. Uh, also fresh harvest is here. Uh, we have some aged teas, uh, which is from my personal collection. So very good. Uh, so uh, how we will try? Uh, actually, I will brew the tea with a pot. I will share with you Kundal Bay or Pincher. And you can take the tea for you, so you don't need to wake up. Just receive the tea. And as soon as you have empty vessel, please send it back to me. It will be good. So let's start. I'm trying to do the same time, both brewing tea and telling some stories. But because we have a big selection of teas, don't worry if you each tea you can have one, two cups, it's okay. Because we have a big collection of teas and it's really not a good idea to take a how to say tea high. <laughs> Maybe someone is good for, for someone is good idea, yeah? Yeah. So first tea will be uh Ohnuki tea from Japan. Actually I also don't try it before. It's something completely new. But this was the value that it's pretty like rare, even in Japan it's difficult to find. It's kind of a local green tea. Uh, because the same as China, Japan also have a lot of tea plantations. Uh, and uh, most of these plantations are actually not very promoted and not uh, very popular. Because they are work for inner market. Uh, and uh, some of these uh, you rarely can find uh, here in Europe. For example, we know Sencha, we know Matcha. Maybe some people know Genmaicha, but that's it. There's uh, way more varieties uh, which is absolutely not promoted in Europe. What I see actually from the first appearance, I will also give you a bag if you like to look. Uh, you can have a look. Uh, so this is uh, like directly from the farm. Just my friends uh, was on the farm. Uh, the production of this tea it looks like white tea actually. Because for me, it's very interesting how how it will be on taste. We will try. Mm -hmm. The leaf is pretty, uh, so it's a little bit fluffy, and uh, yeah, something different from what I tried before. <laughs> also, Japanese tea often brew it in different way. Uh, so I use a Chinese brewing, but uh, for Japanese uh, teas regularly we use a different kind of teapots, and also we often brew in European style, not the way I'm brewing, but I still prefer. Uh, this kind of brewing. Uh, do you have do? do, do is here someone who's not familiar with what I'm doing? Or anyone already like no? Okay, great. No, I will no, easily explain. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> easily very short <laughs> explanation. Yeah, please. Uh, so here we have a vessel which is called Isin teapot, or actually not only Isin, it's a geographical reason. We have a region, we have also teapots from Jianshui, other places in China. Uh, the main thing that it's not very big. Uh, actually, regularly it's from 90 uh, milliliters to 250 something, and uh, it can be really like d different depend depending on the amount of the guests. And they use a teapot, we use a vessel which is called Pincher Umbundal Bay, and we use a cup. It's the most simple presentation of uh, tea which is called um, Pincha in Chinese, uh, or Bunkucha if you use a ceremonial uh, way of brewing thing. And uh, yeah, and uh, here we just uh, we're actually the purpose is to brew tea as more tasty as possible. And uh, the, actually, there is a practical reason because uh, sticking this way, we have uh, very quick infusions, uh, which we uh, all the time do, like from one to three seconds, no longer. And uh, this way the tea opens up slowly from steep to steep and we have more delicate flavor and fragrance and aroma, anything. Uh, this way we have also, uh, actually we more economically use tea. We can take less leaves and uh, have more drink actually if we just use a regular European big pot. Uh, so it's more convenient uh, for first impression it can look like oh it's too messy but actually it's very simple to use and it's very practical and the second thing is of course is the aesthetics of the tea ceremony itself and uh, this way of consumption which is called also Gunkucha or Pincha as I call uh, I think that uh, this is actually one of the best communication frameworks which you can find uh, because it's also kind of a ritual you can, which you can bring in your regular lifestyle 
just replace some bad habits also or just uh, change your regular consumption of coffee or tea with this and it's uh, actually not only more beneficial for health because tea is more healthy than coffee for many reasons uh, but also it's actually more beautiful and then you hence doing something more how to say more moves <laughs> with small play on a, on a tea tray actually this uh, uh, called a tea tray and uh, or tea desk uh, you can have kind of a good daily ritual at the same time practical at the same time aesthetics and it's all about yeah some people collect tea wear a lot as me for example and uh, also different type of teas uh, so it's the same broad culture as uh, other cultures like wine or something else so it's even uh, for my personal opinion tea even more rich in varieties and uh, you can find way more taste in, in tea from very light to very fermented ones and experimental ones so it's like how hot is the water? Uh, I use uh, regularly. I only use hot water. You know, because why? I, of course, so some teas, especially for green teas, you can use a little bit more colder water, maybe yeah. about 80, 85. It's recommended, but for when we have sessions like that, it's a little bit more difficult to control the temperatures. And I just use regular water, especially because this uh, tea is pretty big leaf tea. It's not very, uh, like how to say very sensitive uh, like uh, tea from small leaves this is why I say it looks, it looks like a white tea like shawmai tea from China for my taste actually it's really light <laughs> I know how, how what is your reaction on this how do you feel very light. light very light yeah. Yeah. I believe maybe it's yeah we will brew something next so you will try it just you have an impression about uh, Japanese ohmuki <laughs> tea yeah <laughs> Like Funny how big leaf they use for green tea because regularly in China, for example, such a big leaves never used uh, for green tea, mostly. Ex maybe excluding some types like Taipin Hokui, uh, some others, uh, but still, uh, for my opinion, it's better to use uh, one leaf, one pot, and smaller, like very young leaves. Uh, it's more fits green tea, especially. Do you so, grow it in the north or the south of China? It, it, this is a Japanese tea. Uh, actually, it's a south and Shikoku district. It's, it's a south of Japan. Yeah, so the next tea will be... Uh, I try to be very wary today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next tea, let be Gaba. Uh, Gaba Asam Kuncha. Actually, it's uh, one of our treasures. It's a newcomer from this year harvest, winter tea. And uh, it's uh, made on our factory in Thailand because we have a two our own production. One is in Thailand, one is in uh, Georgia, because I'm Georgian, so we're just doing some tea there. And uh, this tea actually uses the style, let's say, of production, which is called vacuum uh, or anaerobic fermentation. Uh, a special machine. Uh, I can show actually, especially here, put my book for easy showing how it looks like. It's pretty interesting technology, and uh, I think <laughs> we can name it one of the most difficult technologies uh, because it contains around 17 steps. Uh, you can browse uh, from this is Taiwan Ulun processing, yeah. and here we have all the steps we choose it for all Uluns, but for Gaba tea use also this machine so it's an anaerobic uh, uh, altitude uh, chamber and uh, after rolling the tea in these bolts put there for around eight hours for fermentation uh, from factory to factory from master to master this technology is a little bit different but you can have a look how difficult just to process the leaves how many steps you need to take and some of these steps also repeating <laughs> so you can have a look and uh, regularly for this type of production uh, use it uh, uh, tea from Ulun variety or black, black dragon in English and uh, mostly also actually this tea first was uh, open or this first production was started in Japan and they use green tea they use a uh, uh, green tea for this but uh, after most of the tea production moved to Taiwan 
and also some factories existing in China, Vietnam and Thailand. Uh, also very few factories uh, in other countries, but mostly the most promoted uh, GABA tea comes from Thailand. And they mostly use actually own tea, own uh, tea tree, own variety. But we use here Assam variety. This is why uh, this tea is a little bit more strong and even less maybe fruity notes and so on, but it's more uh, strong in some point. Uh, I, like, I like actually the, this even bitterness <laughs> because it's pretty works better, how we can call it. Because from a sun variety, mostly uh, produced uh, in United Province, mostly manufacturing uh, shampware and shoeware tea, and some red tea also. Uh, but this time we tried to make GABA from this variety, so it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I use with Steve. <laughs> Actually, this one, one of my favorite uh, teas because it's very rich in taste and it also opens up from steep to steep, slowly, and uh, give you a very broad uh, feeling of taste, aroma, fragrances, aftertaste, and also give you pretty good note, <laughs> how we can call it, because actually GABA tea is uh, very famous because of it's beneficial for health, first, because it's, how to say, it's harmonize uh, your mental state, it's uh, actually very healthy, even GABA you can buy, for example, on pills, but uh, consumption in the products is uh, more affect the body, actually, and it works even better sometimes. And more healthy actually, because it's natural without any like, special medicine. Is it a tree? GABA. Uh, what? Tree? A tree? No, no, no. GABA actually it's a processing. So the tree is Assam, Assam mm. cultivar. Uh, there is also Assam region in India. Don't mm. mess, it's a different thing. Assam is uh, also a big area in India. There are tea production also present. But they do a pretty different type of tea. Uh, Regularly in Assam, there was like more mass production tea, uh, like uh, regular black tea, green tea. Some, but my partner just this year, he was there around a month uh, in Assam and he spent pretty long time. Before now, we had like kind of disaster there with uh, all this, uh, uh, how to say, uh, flooding <laughs> and so on. He was lucky to. Yeah, you can transfer to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just. So it's the name of the technology, right? GABA. 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 GABA, GABA it means like uh, anaerobic fermentation, actually. Uh, and GABA it means gamma amino acid, which is very good for brain, for concentration, and also for uh, how to say it? It's a neuromediator. So it's a. Uh, uh, germanize your mental state. Mm -hmm. I heard many, it's very popular among like uh, programmers. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really helped to focus. <laughs> and the same time also it's uh, anti-stress, uh, the stress uh, reduction, so how to say it. So it's really like uh, relief uh, mental health. Is uh, it a yeah. bit like black tea? Yeah, yeah actually it's a black tea, black but tea. because of GABA fermentation and also ulun processing, ulun like processing, so it's a little bit similar like Ulun, with some fruity notes also existing. But it's not the same as Ulun by taste, as you see. So it's interesting. Uh, this tea, the first tea we drink, I only have this sample. This tea, for example, if you like, we have it uh, in shop, so you can buy it if you like. We will mix it today, because when I just uh, brew only teas from my collection, some people buy it and buy that, so we will have some teas from the shop too, today. Yeah, the best ones actually we try to select uh, because we have a pretty wide collection and all the time growing. We want to share something what we really prefer. Yeah, and you see it's it's also can be infused many times because uh, the material it's uh, from uh, tea trees. Some tea trees are pretty old, uh, from 80 to 300 years. It's uh, we have uh, around 50 hectares of land. And uh, so it's also wild, wild actually forest. We call it not even plantation because it's located beside the forest. And we have a pretty interesting tea forest project. You can also search teaforestproject.com. It even becomes darker, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It slowly opens up, and uh, you can also make it more stronger if you just 
tip it for a longer time. Mm. Does it have coffee in, like black yeah. tea? Yeah, of course, any tea contains coffee, but uh, in GABA tea, it's in, uh, how to say, if it works together with GABA, mm -hmm. it brings you a little bit different uh, feeling. Mm. So here is actually, I believe, the seventh, seventh tip. It's okay, we can, we can change the next one, I think, anyone try it. Yeah, because, yeah, I want to share more. Sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, some teas <laughs> have a potential, especially Oun, uh, especially Assam uh, teas have it because uh, it's endemic species. It's not uh, as Oun, for example, it also was before it was endemic Oun tea tree. It still actually exists in the border of uh, Fujian province and Guangdong province. But uh, Assamic tea tree is like a most old wild type. Uh, originally, it's uh, most close to the uh, origin of tea plant uh, because uh, the motherland of tea plant uh, actually it's a uh, south of china province yunnan province and there you can find still you can find uh, some trees like 3000 years old and even older actually i was uh, maybe near a few of these trees one is located uh, in fencing county uh, jinsu village it's uh, 3200 years old <laughs> So it's, it's now it's named like oldest tea tree on the planet. But there are also existing some wild trees in the jungles on Ailao Shan and Bada Shan and other mountains in China. But in uh, Thailand, for example, in Laos, Burma, uh, even Vietnam, northern parts of these countries also exist in a lot of old tea trees. A way valued, uh, especially in China, by collectors uh, who do buy the tea, uh, especially Shenpur from these trees. So the next tea will be a black tea. It's a this year harvest, uh, made in March uh, of this year. And uh, it's Yo uh, Ji Cha, this means in Chinese organic black tea. It's actually also a sample, I only have a sample. Uh, and this uh, I just received last week the bag from China I need to try first this is um, the black tea also from Assam tea tray it's from Yunnan province and it's organic it's which is pretty yeah it's a, it's a same tea tree but uh, uh, regular this one I believe it's a bush because uh, Assam can be a bush can be a big tree but this one is a bush and this is a plantation uh, material from Menhai region from Yunnan the present tea, the last one uh, we drink is was from Thailand, but this one is from China. So now we had Japan, Thailand and China. The next one will be some other country. <laughs> uh, traveling, which is uh, what I like uh, actually the, the concept, how we call it, tea culture club. We don't call it Chinese tea culture or Japanese tea culture or any other tea culture. It's a uh, worldwide tea culture because now not only consumption of tea actually exists in any country, but also a tea uh, can be grown in many countries, not only in China and Japan and Asia, but also this slowly the technology moves to other countries and more and more uh, people can produce and learn how to produce a good tea in such countries like Georgia, like in Turkey, even in Europe, here we have some tea. In Brabant, uh, we have some Dutch tea, actually, who didn't knew, we can try. Actually, Dutch white tea is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's even already aged. It was made uh, uh, two years ago, especially by order, uh, by Johan Janssen, who is the owner of uh, local tea production. And uh, he mostly focuses on kind of tea bags and blends, but especially for us, he do loose leaf. Uh, and it's, uh, this tea is grown in green tins, but there is existing some uh, enthusiasts who grow just uh, in open in open soil. In uh, actually, it exists in France, in Belgium, in Netherlands, in Germany, any country actually. <laughs> but very small plantations. It's, quite, it's not very commercial thing <laughs> because. Do you think of the Indian and Turkish uh, traditions? It's like uh, they're cheap. Uh, does, that, does that feel like delicate? Uh, actually, uh, Turkish tea is mostly uh, for like for Turkish people, how to can say, because I, I think that it's okay. It's okay to drink, 
and also uh, people love it of course but uh, for me it's like too too strong yeah. and also the fragrances and aroma of course not so rich as in Chinese teas and it's not only because of uh, place actually or geographical reason it's mostly because of technology often in Turkey they have it's like a big crop like that and they make a broken leaf uh, with, with sticks with also old leaves in it uh, ferment it very strong and also brew it very strong so this is why the yeah the aftertaste and aroma of this tea is not so rich it's really uh, i think that but what i can say that we have a lot of friends from turkey actually because uh, we love tea a lot and and as soon as we try this tea they switch to next day <laughs> to the good Chinese tea because wow tea can be like that uh, easily because uh, it's like a number one nation on the planet drinking tea even more than English guys yeah. even more than Chinese so this yeah, is I, why I couldn't find a Chinese tea in, Tur in Turkey yeah they only had all this like you know why because they have restrictions not like like protecting uh, measures uh, you need to pay 100 percent tax for any import tea in Turkey, yeah, because we even have an idea to open tea house in Istanbul because it's a big city, a very good city, actually very beautiful and multicultural and a lot of people there, a lot of tourists, so it's a good location for a business like ours, but bringing tea there you need to pay 100% commission, so we even had an idea maybe, yeah, to start some in Rize, uh, actually in the border with Georgia, Ajari region, there's a very big uh, tea production in Turkey. And uh, there is some uh, actually enthusiasts who also do good tea, but very, very few. Hopefully, maybe someday we also go there. I not, don't was uh, there yet, but some friends uh, invited me already, maybe next year or we will have a look. Because we have a production just nearby in Guria, in Georgia, so it's just three hours, two hours drive. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Uh, this, this one we don't have yet, but if you like this one, I can really recommend uh, any from our Dienhunds uh, U9 uh, red teas. So guys can recommend you like Dajinde, Dajinya and some others very, very similar to this taste because it's the same variety and the same region, just a little bit different processing. And uh, we have a good selection of red teas from the same region. Yeah. Also, we have a Shaigan, uh, Shaigan Ding Hung, we still have, yeah, Oliver? Yes. Yeah, this one is very similar to this one. Actually, it's, this tea also often called Dian Hung Cha, uh, which means uh, from Dian, it's an old name of Yunnan province. Uh, and the same as you can, if you travel to China someday, you will see the number plates on a car. Uh, then you see like these uh, characters and the very beginning of the number plate, like yeah like dian like yeah like uh, yeah 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 like uh dung in guangdong province and in other provinces or bay in, in beijing uh, in capital of china so yeah so this is a uh, dianhong this is why dianhong like uh, literally can be translated like yun nine t yun nine red yeah and uh also a funny story if you didn't hear yet but in china no one called black they all call it red tea yeah. <laughs> so this is yeah we have this hong cha yeah 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 but but uh, in europe anyone call it black mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it's because of misunderstanding on the first traders actually dutch people because dutch people were the first who mm -hmm. arrived uh, to china for tea actually even bring a tea earlier than english ones and uh, not so many people know that hey right. right? hey right. yeah so yeah you can take this one so this is like uh which you would just try it is like the most maybe common thing for China, uh, China uh, for export because uh, especially uh, from Yunnan, uh, Dianhong Group, one of the biggest uh, government uh, tea production company, uh, they started in the beginning of 20th century and they export uh, these teas a lot. It especially was made for European and American market because uh, in China, they much less drink fermented teas. Mostly they drink green tea, white tea, uh, but now it's more and more became popular, like poor tea, especially in Guangdong province, uh, also very popular. Is it good fermented? Uh, this is uh, like, uh, actually this is fermented around 60%. Uh, the black tea or red tea, it's, it's called like fermented tea, but if we talk about poor, for example, it's even more fermented th than this one. 
I put my marker uh, somewhere. Yeah, okay. So the next one, next one, let it be because we start talking about Georgia and Turkey. Let it be Georgian tea. Actually, this one is a green tea from Georgia. Oh no, it, it, it's not true. It's not a green tea from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> this one is green tea from Georgia. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, uh, this is also not a green tea from <laughs> Georgia, but this is a Georgian tea at least. Yeah, it's uh, made on a factory of our friends. They also located in Azurgeti, and they do experiment with a kind of uh, hay cha. So it's like uh, hay cha. Actually, it's a real black or dark tea, and you see how big sticks exist because it's crops like that uh, used for this tea, uh, but. Uh, because of fermentation, it became more, more fragrant and more aromatic, even with this material, when you have more sticks than leaves, actually. <laughs> but this is experimental type. Uh, they used uh, uh, technology from China. Uh, I will, if you have uh, my book some there, can you please? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's my book. It's, there is a Russian version and English version too. Uh, actually, it's very interesting. It's about geography, production, Tea technologies, some stories, a little bit tea science. Now we're working on the next one. It's even more broad, uh, and it's focused on tea culture and consumption mostly. Yeah, this is an article about hay cha production. I just want to show you how it looks like. This is uh, yeah, actually Anhua County in uh, Hunan Province, and there you see the it's with, with do it drying of semi product. Uh, and also, there is explanation of technology. Uh, hopefully, it's here. So you can, yeah, read, it, have some pictures. It's it's a how uh, Hecha manufactured. Actually, this is a center of poor tea because uh, Hecha or dark tea. Uh, actually, it's literally translated as black tea, but we don't have a uh, confusion with. Uh, Europeans who, know, who name red tea as a black tea, recognize it as a black tea in the uh, Western world, uh, Chinese translate this hei cha as a dark tea to English. And uh, this is a processing, how it's made. Pretty interesting, uh, like a wet peeling and drying uh, of semi product, and also fermenting and also compressing cakes or big tunes or some other shapes. Uh, actually, this type of pressing uh, came from Georgia. And this is why now we try in Georgian HR, which is like uh, back to the basics, how to say it's uh, uh, back to the experimenting that the Georgians have in Soviet times in 60s, when they bring some machinery and some technologies to China. And even in Anhua County in, uh, in uh, Hunan province, uh, they have a museum. Then uh, there's a few photos of Soviet Georgian, actually, uh, Georgian scientists who bring this uh, to China and they still still have kind of machinery which is similar uh, to Kabuleti factory which still exists in Georgia but they do different Kalmyk bricks. Daniel, can you please bring this Kalmyk tea bricks and also HR hey, bricks? I just want to say, Kalmyk? yeah, yeah, Kalmyk actually. Ah, Oliver will bring. Yeah, so you can have a look uh, in the book this production. Yeah, so. Uh, Kalmyk, yeah, it's a republic inside the Russian Federation, but it's called Kalmyk tea, but actually this tea is uh, very popular also in uh, many regions. It's also popular in Mongolia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take a look. You can take a look. Uh, just Oliver, give it to the people, let them take it. Yeah. It's a very interesting tea. It contains a lot of sticks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's regularly uh, the consumption of this tea. It's something completely different from how do you see the regular tea consumption. They add salt, butter. fat, yeah, butter, uh, sometimes even like, you know, like uh, some, like even rice, you know, they can add it in food. So it's like kind of energetic, not only drink, but also as a food. And before, it's actually the most, one of the most old and ancient way of tea consumption. Uh, because actually what we have now in Thailand and Cambodia, this Myank, which is a uh, fermented uh, tea leaves. Uh, this is absolutely not tea. We take fresh leaves, big leaves, and ferment it as a cabbage, for example, like fermented cabbage. 
and it's pretty interesting. They added to the salads, and in Burma also pretty popular. Uh, for example, in now village in uh, Thailand, where our factory located, Ban Lao village, uh, uh, there is also existing production of this miang. What? North of Thailand. North of Thailand. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, our factory located around to one hour and a half to our drive from Chiang Mai, to the north. Yeah, there was a few other villages. Uh, actually, our village is not very common, uh, not very famous place uh, in China for this. But uh, in uh, other places like Wavi village and more known and more promoted other places. Uh, uh, Vietnam also, of course. Yeah, Vietnam is a very uh, big tea production. They mostly focused on green tea. They mostly focused on green tea. Yeah, this one is pretty special. And you will try also. This one is actually actual experiment of our friends. Um. So they drink it in Mongolia, right? Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You can put it somewhere or just. Yeah. So this is actually how it looks like now. We just made last year in Georgia. <laughs> we still do it, even with a Soviet uh, symbol. It's still, still because it's still the same shape. What was made in 80s, 70s and yeah, but uh, what we try, yet what you try in Lyle now is pretty bit different. It's something experimental. <laughs> we also do some experiments before we had a small uh, factory in uh, Krasnodar region. Now it's moved to Georgia uh, and uh, there we do also similar like Shupur fermented tea. Uh, uh, how important is it where the material is grown? Ah, the actually the terroir. Yes, yeah, important. The soil, uh, the climate, also important, and also technology. Oh. The first three most important things. But also some other things, like, of course, variety of tea bush, and the season of harvesting, and some other aspects were all important. And uh, from this, we have uh, sometimes like combination. For example, you, this day you Harvest the tea, you make a processing, and next day just rain started or just a little bit more colder weather, and not next day, but maybe okay, week later, you do kind of next production and you have very, very different aroma, uh, taste, and anything from actually the same bush. And this is very funny because uh, sometimes you just don't realize how it can be. The same bush, the same master, the same factory, <laughs> the same plantation even. But yeah, it's okay. What kind of uh, technology are you using? Is it also the hydraulic system? Or it's uh, actually it's very broad, uh, especially if you talk about... Uh, about uh, we talking about this tea or...? Any kind. Any kind. <laughs> There's like, you know, hundreds of varieties. Uh, actually in the book, I only explained like very few and very in, like in general, for example, like I just written about the uh, uh, HR processing, but HR, there's uh, more than 10 varieties of HR, for example. So this is uh, what we're drinking is like experimental from Georgia, but there was also like Anhua HR, HR from uh, Anhui province, from Sichuan province, from Guangxi province, and it's all uh, recognized as a HR, but all these types are very different in tastes and in technology and in harvesting period even and uh, how do they crop, uh, for example, like HR, like we're drinking now, it's a big crop, but uh, HR in uh, Luan, it's smaller, like for leaves maybe. Uh, so it's uh, very different and also with processing is very different. Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. It's like, like, yeah, Georgian puer. You yeah. try an <laughs> experimental thing now. Yeah. Also, they do like, I think, a pretty strong fermentation. How to say? In, in very easy terms, it's like when you put uh, the leaves after rolling, so you have a juice from the leaves. And you put it in some place just to ferment, just to put it it's like, you know, it's oxidation and fermentation in, in combined. So it's kind of, uh, then uh, all ferments coming out and enzymes and all the rest uh, components of tea are replaced by ferments actually. And uh, I'm not a chemist, so I can tell it in very detail, but actually uh, the 
this is why you see the different taste of fermented and unfermented tea, even if it's taken from absolutely the same uh, bush, the same tea tree. Uh, so this is how we have this fermentation. We will switch to the next one. Yeah, Georgian shoopware, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it really looks like shoopware more than Haysha. Yeah. It sounds like tea can grow like pretty much everywhere. Like yeah, but not everywhere, actually. It's, you know, you need a certain soil. This is very important for tea. Uh, and uh, this um, soil, not, not any soil fits for tea. For example, in Georgia, there's a soil that's very good for tea. And in this uh, soil also, for example, very good for kind of nuts and the kind of other berries, but not fits other agricultural uh, uh, types. But uh, so you need a certain kind of soil. And uh, after that, you need a certain time of climate. There is a lot of uh, foggy uh, in the mornings, especially fog uh, is very good for tea plant. And it must be not very dry. So it's like a subtropical climate is one of the best. Uh, it was for best for tea. So we try the next one. The herb grows in greenhouses, right? Yeah, grows in greenhouses, but also in open soil also. Uh, like a few in Tesla, as I, I just said, they exist the next one will be a sample uh, from China. Uh, this is recognized as Lao Shen Cha. I don't know which kind of. So it's aged, aged Shen Pur. It's written like 2003, so it's almost 20 years of aging. But I don't know is it true or not. <laughs> so we will like try. Old, old yeah, it's like but aged tea. The same as as you have a, you can age wine or cheese or. Uh, even uh, I uh, really like to talk about uh, the New Zealand's uh, uh, dairy company and they call, they have a good cheese, actually cheddar, and they have a slogan, uh, good things takes time. <laughs> so it's actually, it's really, uh, I like uh, mainland, mainland company, I like their cheeses. It's actually often can be found in Thailand <laughs> because it's like closest uh, cheese production area. And they uh, do, yeah, actually uh, fermented products now really valued uh, for a lot of benefits, uh, especially for stomach and uh, for any other. Uh, yeah. That take at least one year to yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of, some of those, even two years or three years, you yeah. can just really ferment cheese and it's, uh, it's actually very uh, good knowledge and it tastes are really different and I really like fermented cheeses. And it's super stiff on, on the outside, so they have to cut it all like, yeah. away yeah. to get to the soft, like, yeah. uh, you know, inner part. Yeah. So first steep will don't drink. And if they have that, they put the expiry dates on the tea also. Actually, there is no expiry date for tea. <laughs> because if you store it in the right condition, with no mold, if it's not wet, it can be stored for any time. It's not spo there's no any which can spoil your health. It's nothing. It just dries a little. But for example, I have uh, my own storage, uh, like a personal warehouse of rarities, <laughs> around five tons maybe in total. And uh, it's all uh, I have some teas which I stored at least 15 years. But where are the teas? And we will drink some of those today also. Uh, which can store it like 50 years and even longer. And uh, it's not like someone forgot, it's especially aged and it's very valued and it's way more expensive than the new ones. And uh, there was a story like, okay, green tea can't be stored. But there was also a Taiwanese collectors who, sta who, who start store green tea. And there is a term like Lao Liu Cha, which means uh, aged green tea. It literally sounds like it's like non-fresh green tea, how you can drink it. But uh, I, I, when I tried it for the first time, I was also very surprised uh, how it can be, but I was very skeptical. Uh, but when I tried it, I was surprised. It's really very tasty and fragrant. And, and they do have a kind of technology how to store it properly. Uh, so some of uh, collectors, they each one year or each three years, they make a small kind of, not roasting, but uh, how it's called, kind of, um, uh, how it is, baking, kind of baking of very low temperature. Yeah, uh, what? 
uh, like a bacon on a, you know, it's how it looks like. It looks like a Wishan T technology. Where's my book? I can show again. Yeah, I can, I can uh, show you the process, how it looks like. Uh, it's actually the final step of uh, Uishan Ulun tea processing. I will have a look. Where is it? You see these baskets? These baskets and uh, this uh, special like uh, cement stand. Inside you put the coal, uh, like, uh, but it's a, uh, it's a coal uh, for like a f fruit tree coal, for example. And charcoal. Uh, charcoal, charcoal, yeah, exactly. And you cover it with the ash. Also, sometimes some masters use a certain ash from certain trees, you know. And the uh, we'll le we'll level actually of this ash, you also need to know how much you need to put this ash. And uh, behind you, you, you put these baskets with the tea. And uh, it takes up to eight hours, six hours. Some masters do it 12 hours. It's also tricky because no one knows how long. Uh, so, so masters know, but no one tell you in detail, uh, actually for very first impression. You can have a look uh, how it looks like. It's very interesting technology. And uh, so aged teas, uh, if we talk about Lao Lucha, for example, or aged white teas, aged Ulungs, they regularly do this technology again with uh, already aged teas. So it's also pretty interesting. So like the coal uh, is hot, right? Yeah, it's pretty, and like, like, yeah, it's like red, but you just cover it with a layer of uh, ash. And like, it's like uh, Yes. Yeah. So it's stewed. Uh, stewed, 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 yeah. You know it's better how it's called. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought, because like you said, uh, bake. No, 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 it's the not closest, bake. The closest word from Yeah, stewed. Stewed. I can better explain that in Chinese, yeah, like. Hunbei. Hunbei, it's... Yeah, hai kei shou ha. Oh. Okay, shou han yu. Be in your gao. Uh, would you prefer, uh, I'm just saying that uh, it's better than English, so it's no, easy, no. easy. Have you lived in China? Yeah, 10 years, actually, <laughs> yeah. Years. So, uh, not all the time, but during these 10 years, spend most of time in China. Hopefully it will open this autumn. I really miss it. Is it very different than uh, Russia? <laughs> 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 it's like, uh, you know, if, if, if compare uh, Amsterdam and Moscow, it's like the same if you compare China and Russia it's like so this came like Russia is almost like Europe just maybe more wild a little but it's still European uh, culture and European mentality more European than Chinese uh, yeah but uh, China is like completely separate universe uh, comparing to yeah 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 but now yeah now you know it's like difficult to judge because Russia also <laughs> Russia is also different, uh, especially eastern sites. We have like yeah. Yakutia and Buryatia regions, awesome. which is Asian, which is Asian. Yeah. And it's this yeah. Shen is uh, from uh, the samples, it's Lao Shen Chan. I don't believe it's uh, from 2003, I believe it's younger. But it's difficult to judge Chinese. <laughs> you often can see some uh, not very true information. This one again uh, reminds me of, uh, you know, Kujim. Yeah, this but it's maybe because you have a very strong brew. I believe the first step I was, I made pretty strong. Yes, it was like, but here, yeah, we have a, actually for my perception, it may be like for six, seven years old Shen. Uh, in its plantation uh, material, it's not uh, from old trees. It's not a very expensive one, but still it's interesting to try. Maybe this one will be will last from this bunch. We will try something else. Let it be other type of GABA. It's called uh, GABA Chinmai, Chinrai. We have it actually in a shop. Uh, this is from a shop collection, the second tea <laughs> for today, what we have in stock. Uh, this is a uh, Gaba Ulun tea, which is very classical one. I have the same uh, tea, similar tea made on Taiwan and also in Vietnam, uh, in China. But uh, uh, we do it on uh, Thailand. 
How Actually, many uh, now we have uh, five to six types. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, even more, maybe seven. We have we have some green tea, uh, but uh, regularly they focus on. Now we focus on Shen Puer mostly uh, because we have not so many material. This is not from our field because we have only uh, Assamic trees. We don't have Olunti trees. Uh, so this is uh, made on uh, French factory, but under our control. Actually, the tea production in Thailand is uh, not a very popular thing and very small amount of production compared to China, even compared to Georgia, actually. <laughs> and in Georgia, how many do you produce? Uh, I believe this year maybe it will be a few tons. Uh, because uh, we also don't have very big field, they have uh, five hectares and we're also uh, buying uh, material from like some individuals who have a small field like one, three hectares, hectares. Uh, yeah, but also we cooperate with a big company who have around 200 hectares, uh, for, so we have kind of a mass production tea, which costs like a few euro only, but it's still very good. We don't have it in retail because it's uh, not so good for... It's not loose leaf tea, actually. Is it's it, uh, the same one? Yeah, this is Oolong tea. Oolong. This is Oolong tea from Thailand. Okay. Gabo Oolong, yeah. Gabo. Uh, I heard uh, there was going to be a Georgian tea competition this summer. Did that happen? Uh, Georgian tea... Like an event for, uh, to promote the Georgian tea. Ah, yeah. Actually, we tried already one Georgian. Maybe you, 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 you have it? You have it, you have it. Yeah, but we also we have... Yeah, we, we actually had... Uh, had us one uh, event mm -hmm. last weekend. It was for uh, Thai tea, but we also do brew a lot of Georgian tea. Maybe not this time. We will brew some, but uh, not a special event for Georgian teas because we don't have a very broad selection of those. But uh, we will drink today more of Georgian teas too. No, no, no. This is Olong. This is Olong. Olong is. Uh, it's not green, Olong. Uh, often uh, some people recognize uh, Olong tea as a green because of a color, mm -hmm. because it's uh, not fermented, uh, but it's it's actually fermented, but around uh, up to 30%. Uh, some Olong tea is a little bit more, uh, but uh, actually it's called like health fermented teas, all Olongs. Uh, but uh, Olongs is also a very rich variety. For example, now with next tea we also brew Olong. What color is it? Uh, uh, what? Is it what black color is it? Oh, it's not a it's not a color. Actually, it's a cultivar. Oolong is literally translated from Chinese as a black dragon. Oolong. O means black. Long means dragon. So yeah, but it's absolutely not black at all. But still, it's a name. Yeah. So this is why. So sometimes it's also translated as uh, crown Verona. I don't know who, who, who do it this way, but maybe just some some people, uh, you know, just. Uh, Experiment with the naming and branding to Yeah, 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 this is actually Oolons and Gaba tea uh, For my feeling also as you try before Gaba Sam, Hon Cha, Gaba Sam red tea It's uh, one of the most popular teas because it's still very fragrant aromatic and with all fruity notes and aromas uh, And still it's also energizing and sweet uh, So I do believe that is one of the most uh, yeah, popular teas <laughs> so the next one will be also Ulung. They just especially brew it like now. Uh, why? Because it's you will see the complete difference between the first one and the second one, Ulung. This Ulung is from Uishan. I just showed with you the book on the page opened uh, there you seen that uh, this final how do you call that word instead of uh, st Steven. 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 Ah Steven, yeah. My English is still needed for update. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm uh, learning absolutely useless language, which is called Dutch and Georgian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but now, yeah. So this is like um, yeah. called uh, Hui Yuan Ken Shui Xiang. Actually, uh, Hui, it uh, means uh, harmony in Chinese. The same as uh, do something, like Hui. Uh, and also, uh, Hui Yuan, it's a harmony. <laughs> Harmony Garden, <laughs> Harmony Garden. In Russian, yeah, it means That's like strange. fuck. Yeah, but sorry, but it's still it's like hui. This is why, why this is why in Russian transcription often you see like 
not Anhui province, but Anhui province. Or also, if some person have a mean, uh, have, have a mean uh, name in Chinese, like uh, Hui Yuan, Hui Hui Zhen. It's called Hui Zhen, not Hui. Hui, yeah. Hui, Hui. I think people do. So this one is uh, actually Hui Yuan Ken Shui Xiang. Uh, which literally can be translated as a Shui Xian, actually it's a cultivar, it's a variant. Uh, it's like a, a kind of flower. Uh, yeah, and uh, in Chinese I forgot what's the name of flower. You know if Shui Xian, how it's translated? Shui... Yeah, it's not orchid. Orchid is a... No, 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 it's not orchid. Tilan is orchid, but there is a Shui Xian, I always forget how it's... A, it's in English, but okay, let it be like a flower, yeah. And Hu Yuan, Hu Yuan Kan, it's a kind of, uh, I know the, in Russian it's Raspadek, it's when you have two mountains and in between kind of a valley, and it means, it's in Chinese it's called Kan. And uh, Hu Yuan is uh, also uh, the place, uh, the monastery inside the Uishan uh, mountain territory. It's pretty, not very affordable one tea, so it's like kind of exclusive. But we still have a little, I believe we have very few, yeah, we have like yeah, 100 grams. Month, yeah. yeah, we have a little bit, so if you like it... What is it called again? Hu Yuan Ken Shui Xian. I will translate how Shui Xian, how Shui Xian is translated from Chinese. Because it's, it's a like, kind of a flower. It's like water sweet or something. Hu <laughs> uh, Yuan Ken, it's actually the name, it's geographical, geographical region. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I will translate how it's called, uh, this uh, Shui Xian, it's uh, Nertis. Uh, Nertis. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like Narcissus in English. Or uh, on, or in Georgian it will be Narcissi. Uh, no. <laughs> and then uh, in Dutch, how it will be in Dutch? Narcissus. Narcissus? Oh, great, perfect. So the same actually, international world, yeah. In Russian it was an artist. Yeah, so, yeah. the previous one? The previous one was a Gaba Chen Rai. We have it, we have it in stock, you can, yeah, you can buy if you like. Yeah, and this one, Ho Yu again, we also have, but very, very limited amount. Like last, last 100 grams. But this Gaba Chen Rai, we still have a lot. Hopefully. Uh, because it's a little bit less of tea, uh, it's more, so I take a smaller pot. And also the Uishan tea, this is actually recognized as a rock tea in Chinese. Uh, in China also it's called Yancha in Chinese, Yancha rock tea. Uh, also it's called uh, Uishan Ulun teas. It's a very big group. The most famous one is called Dahun Pao, Big Red Drop. I think you heard about this also, Shui Xian, uh, Rogui, uh, all these uh, uh, tea types are very fa famous. Uh, but this one also, Shui Xian, it's uh, one of the most famous, but there's uh, way more types, like Xi Lan, uh, Bai Ji Guan. Kind of, is it Oolong too? It's also Oolong, but it's uh, also stewed Oolong. And uh, the last step, this also stewing we do three times in these baskets. We do it for three times uh, in, a, in the delay in of one month. So after the semi-product is finished in the uh, end of May, they do have a free time of uh, stewing during summertime. So regularly this tea, if it's, even if it's just a spring harvest, it's ready only in the end of August. So this is why in September or October we have kind of docha which means a competition between farmers. It's very good uh, Uishan tradition. Actually, it's also this kind of competition uh, existing in Taiwan, but also in Uishan we have a, a very big competition, also market uh, of exhibition of uh, rock tea. Mm. It's pretty special. It's very special. Yeah. yeah. We also have a different varieties of rock teas, pretty good selection. A little we have because actually there is a cliffs there is a cliffs literally it will be more better to call it like yan it's not a rock it's a cliff yeah uh, and the cliff tea maybe will be more good translation but somehow chinese style called uh, call it a rock tea so 
which is why it's called rock. But uh, it's uh, old mountains. The tallest one, maybe less than one kilometer in, 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 in height and, and, and altitude. And also uh, in between of these rocks, uh, formations, actually very different formations, uh, strange shapes. Whereas in the book we have some uh, kind of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and also there you have uh, all these uh, like terrars between these big rocks uh -huh. and the small stones fall down below and it, this is why it has a very different kind of soil which give absolutely special taste uh, to the tea actually. Yeah, it's also actually the similar, the similar type of production but a different type of uh, uh, culture, different cultivar, because actually Dachon Pao cultivars not exist. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a, all the time, Dachon Pao it's a Tidang cultivar or it's a kind of blend. All the time, each factory they have a brand. Even, even named Dachon Pao, Big Red Drop, it's a kind of, uh, how to say, uh, geographical brand of the Uishan region. So it's recognized as a geographical brand. It's not an actual type of a tree. It's a mostly mythological type because a myth uh, about this uh, tea, uh, why, why it's called Big Red Robe? Because uh, one time one student came for a government, uh, how to say, so for official um, exam uh, into the capital of China for that time. And uh, he passed Uishan mountains and that time there was a lot of Taoist mo monasteries. Now it's mostly Buddhist monasteries, but still exist some Taoist monasteries. Uh, and, uh, and, and he was, feel sick. He feel sick and he just uh, asked for help for a monk from this monastery. And he gave him, him this tea. And this tea make him like relief of his uh, uh, mental problem. Uh, not mental, uh, health problem. <laughs> Maybe mental too, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, but actually he feel good after that and he go and successfully get the exams uh, done. And uh, after that, when he get back, he received a big red rope because he finished the exams. Uh, and, uh, and he want to make this big rope to the monk who helped him. But monk was very like shy about that and very humble and he said, oh, please don't give it to me. And uh, he just give it to the tea tree, to the bush. And this, from this time, it's still called uh, Big Red Rope. Uh, so this is a story behind uh, the actual Dahun Pao tea. Yep. Basically, uh, it could be uh, similar to, to the Huan tea. Actually, it's all on tea tree. All, uh, but, uh, but still, you know, there's more than 800 types of Ulunti trees only in Uishan. Of course, uh, on the market you can find no more than maybe 100, but still it's more possible to find more rare varieties, blah, blah, blah. But still, most of the, uh, of course, uh, even, not even factories, but most of businesses, uh, they just name it Dahun Pao because it's a famous name. Of course, some people call it like Shuixian Rogui Tsilan. That's it. All the rest is way more promoted and way less promoted. And this is why people regularly don't recognize the same like Bai Ji Guan, what is it? And some Bai Tian Yao, Tia Lohan and some others. There's many, many of Uishan teas. Actually, it's a separate word. You can only have like a, one shops only for Uishan teas, like 300 types of, of those. Easy. <laughs> in, best, in best ages, actually, I had uh, uh, 120 of Uishan teas <laughs> in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it's a generic. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of uh, regional, regional brand. For example, if you grow uh, Ulun teas in Sichuan province, you can't name it Dahun Pao. But people often use that. For example, in South of Fujian, there are a lot of Dahun Pao grow it in a huge amounts. Uh, mass production Dahun Pao is grow it on, in other provinces also. So now, for example, my book called Geography of Chinese Tea. But actually, if you just change 
if you just uh, look for current situation, uh, you can see that uh, a lot of keys uh, now, how to say, it's all grown in different regions. For example, some Uluns are growing in completely different regions. Some, you know, technological processing like poor uh, also you can find in Fujian. For example, we had here like Tiguanin uh, shoeware, which is just so we take a uh, Ulun material and make fermenting like shoeware in Fujian province. So it's completely in strange. Uh, regularly, it's no one do that. Also, at the same time, we have like white hecha which means like, uh, so it's a white tea, uh, but it was fermented as a hecha. This uh, actually Jinghua mold, which is uh, uh, regularly can be found on uh, hecha. So, and there's a way more varieties and actually it was my big passion to experiment like that, which is why actually we started our own factories because I want to experiment. I want to do something completely new. And I want to experiment with the fermentation, with the other things. So it's, this is why. The next tea uh, will be uh, Chao Cha. It's called in Chinese, uh, actually Chao Cha. <laughs> Chao Cha, it means uh, fry, to fry in Chinese. And uh, yeah, you can uh, like fry, actually fry tea, fry tea. It, it's one of the oldest uh, types of tea from Guangdong province. Uh, it became, have a history from Son Son dynasty. And it's interesting in, in that it's not promoted abroad at all, and even inside China, not so many people know it. Because uh, Chao Cha is actually, uh, how to say, uh, it's a Ulun tea tree, an Ulun variety. But this variety uh, first was uh, uh, mostly recognized as Ulun what we tried just, just now. So like uh, lighter Uluns, like Tiguanin, like, like all these Gaba teas, like other Uluns uh, like uh, rock tea, yancha, uh, like Guangdong tea, but this is also from Guangdong, but it's absolutely not uh, <clears throat> not promoted. It's something really even strange for some people because it's really like, at the same time, it's pretty strong in taste. And it's uh, also uh, the same time also a little bit flavory and aroma, aromatic. Uh, I, I really love it. and. Uh, this chow cha have a different technology. It's frying, it's frying in a very low temperature for around from six to 10 hours. Regularly it's like eight hours on a very low technology in uh, like in uh, like roasting, mostly it's not frying actually, uh, but uh, we call it chow, <laughs> like frying actually in Chinese. Uh, and um, this way it's really intense taste uh, Guangdong people, I will brew it pretty strong, but it, you will have a real experience of how Chinese do brew this tea. Because it's really, they brew it very strong, sometimes like bitter and sour and so on, but it's... Uh, when, when I tried it for the first time, I, I said that it's a killer of rock teas and pours at once. Because it's like uh, similar in some uh, way with a rock tea, we were Yan Cha, but also it's uh, very close uh, to the uh, puer in some point because it's also strong and intense. What kind of tea is this? It's called Chao Cha. Chao Cha. I, do, I don't believe we do we have it in a sorbet now, maybe we have some, maybe two types. But uh, actually it's Guangdong Uluns, but it's a regular Guangdong Uluns. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 it's uh, very strong. Uh, those who love coffee. Really, it. it's a coffee killer. It's a coffee killer because it's really strong. And in the morning, you have a shot of this tea. You don't need a coffee at all because it works longer and it contains 10 times more coffee than coffee. And it's, it's very strong. It's very strong. So we just drink a little, don't drink too much. Yeah. You see, it's also in coffee taste a little. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that it's but, often, like many people but, but know. yeah, but actually aftertaste is perfect. We will have a very good selection of these teas around maybe August. Uh, no, 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 end of August, maybe end of September, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's strong. But it, actually, this is how Chinese do brew it. It can be brewed much lighter, easy. But I want you to have this experience to have real Guangdong style tea.
Yeah. I just, I just, I just put a lot of tea. Yeah, a lot of tea. It's like all, almost full teapot. Yeah, yeah, it's almost full teapot. You know, this old Jew anecdote here yeah, about <laughs> all this old joke. Yeah, just, just put more tea. <laughs> how do you do your? How do you make your perfect tea? tea? Yeah, just. <laughs> yeah, it actually. In, 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 yeah, in China they call it Chao Cha. It's a name of a tea. Funny. This is our original packaging from this region. It's a Zhejiang County in uh, Guangdong Province, and they have this Gaoshan Chao Cha. But in English, they write Tieguanin tea. <laughs> you know why? Because we know something in English about Ulun teas, and then we write, okay, let it be Tieguanin tea. And the China tea gift. All this uh, so funny English. Uh, English, yeah, English uh, sign, but it's all no relates to the actual meaning of the original tea, which means Gaoshan Chao Cha. This means high mountain Chao Cha, a fried tea, actually. Yeah. Too much. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's not popular. Okay, okay, good. I, I love you had this experience. Please uh, send it to there. The people love it. Yeah, send it to the back. There's a the fans of Chao Cha, okay? <laughs> In Russian, in English, it will be way longer story. But uh, okay, there was a question about how to properly store poor tea at home. Yeah, at home. Uh, properly, you just uh, in regular condition, like you store. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. The fans of Chao Cha here, I see. <laughs> Someone so I want us to feel a strong, strong force. No, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You can send it to the front desk, maybe the people try there. I, I brew just last one because it's really strong. Yeah, but about pours, actually, of storage. Uh, regular room temperature, ventilation, and the high humidity is really recommended. So you can have kind of humidor like used for cigars. It will be perfect because uh, humidity level around 60 is good and uh, not too dry not like 40 it's very bad for tea and also ventilation no any other smells like not in the kitchen so don't store any tea on the kitchen please not on the balcony during winter time when it's too dry it's not not uh, direct sunlight of course no any glass cans it must be closed uh, for any tea actually uh, which is why we don't use any glass cans even for temp temporary storage of uh, tea what we present because uh, you can maybe see in some shops glass it's destroyed tea in a week you know because of a sour of yeah of course <laughs> yeah 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 in the bar yeah, yeah yeah easy easy any kind of smoke any kind of smell any sunlight any light actually in uh, and for some teas like uh, Oolong teas and green teas it's very important to be closed not open the back, don't keep it open. But for poor is okay. This is why we use this uh, wrapping like in rice paper is okay for poor tea and for white tea and for hay cha. It's okay to have some air, but not too much. So this is why it's, let it be closed in paper or something. Uh, so it must breathe, but not too much. But some people will also, for example, shen poor and they want edge it shu poor, they close it, they seal it in plastic just to stop natural fermentation because shu poor as any poor actually not actually any tea but poor more fits this uh, why because it's not don't have a final fixation uh, high thermal uh, processing which uh, which is main difference between shen poor and the green tea you know green tea you have this final drying process with shen poor you don't have it you just dry it under the sun uh, shade uh, so this is why it's called shai qin mao cha in chinese which means like a semi-product of uh, dried under the sun shade, in shade of sun. Yeah, even sometimes under direct sunlight, if it's not too intense, it's also possible to dry. Yeah, so this is uh, for strong people who, no, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, okay, let's try, try, it's chow cha. Okay, we finish with this one. I will be, I will care of you, you know, you see? <laughs> Not too strong, but actually I love it because uh, it's also it can be brewed not so strong You can experiment and brew it in uh, Not so intense uh, taste you can put less 
uh, also it's possible uh, and there is a different varieties of chow cha not only this one the next tea will be uh, shupware shupware yeah too much of chow cha okay okay so next tea is called yo di cha shu cha yo di means uh, or organic so it's organic shupware from Manhai region from my friends actually it was made in 2016 so it's also a little bit aged it's eight six years old next time i will i will make it in dutch <laughs> i will be very humble <laughs> and speak not too much we will focus on ceremony <laughs> and silence <laughs> because i almost know nothing in uh, yeah, so this is this one is actually very good material and at the same time it's organic super it's really rare for super if it's not from old trees so it's pretty good okay this is a sample i don't try it yet so we kind of experimenting now the first brew of super i all the time recommend don't drink at all it's like washing of tea but i try a little for a yeah, it's oh a good smell actually once i had the worst experience in my life and when i tried 48 or 46 shoe pours at one time during five hours in manhai and after what what i walked around maybe 12 kilometers back to my hotel <laughs> from the mountain area nearby just to yeah and in the night around 4 a.m i just uh, start typing uh, in russian we have a joke like uh, how how to make uh, you how i don't know how, how to my yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah how how to stop my high feeling <laughs> yeah. ah i don't remember i have no exp I, it's too much I had too much exper tea experiences. Yeah, of course. While China was open, it was like that. Now it's way more diff now difficult. Knows, yeah. yeah, which is why we have all these bags and samples. And after that, we order. And happily, I also have uh, employees in, uh, in my warehouse in China. And they also, as soon as we have sample, and I tried. And after that, I sent them to warehouse, and they also tried. And after that is the proof that the sample is the same <laughs> what's in the boxes we send it we, we start exporting this was like one of the reasons why we started in Thailand in Georgia because actually it's way more difficult with China now but uh, still of course we continue with China just uh, to have your own factory in China is more difficult uh, than in Georgia <laughs> <laughs> you know it's first start just because i love tea uh, my wife used to work in a tea house for five years one of the first moscow tea houses and uh, uh, she uh, just yeah passionate tea as me the same and my friend uh, have a chinese wife and after tea house was bankrupt during crisis of 2008 uh, they just stopped and have a few i have a lot of friends who was employee of this tea house and they say oh Sergei you, I, I had done music for that time I do DJ and stuff and I just uh, had uh, some promotion company for music uh, hardcore rave breakcore noise techno uh, and uh, yeah still playing sometimes now we have a tropos records it's also our records actually here you can see uh, it's uh, ethnic and experimental music some also music from actually Yunnan province also there if you like wine I really recommend you can listen here yeah so it's also our label we started last year with my friend here but before I was in music business for long I have a big label and release dozen of CDs and vinyl and whatever and after that I just switched to tea because uh, I just found it as I just it's passionate me and it's more profitable than music because music is just for love it's for fun it's difficult to make money on underground music and I just decided to be also have a, like a first kid at that time my older son now is 12 so it's just the time I started around 13 years ago 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, that time it was like, let's do that some smoothie house. And we just uh, take a saw and some pine uh, desks, you know, just <laughs> and make kind of, <laughs> you know, stand, <laughs> bring some tea from my friend who have Chinese wife and she helped him to bring something from China. And he also helped me with uh, logistics, whatever. After a year, I decided, so I need to learn Chinese and to bring more tea because I need more profitable yeah. possibilities and uh, start traveling to China. And the first time I arrived, I just fall in love with all this Chinese mess around, all these chows, all this living thing, you know, because when you travel to China once, you, you well, there's two possibilities. Or you fall in love or you just think it's, it's completely not, not my thing. If you fall in love, uh, you will be in trouble. Like India, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't like India so much. It's too dirty for me. But sorry if it's like <laughs> it's not has not not hurt anyone. But I love uh, some culture and music from India and also people are good. But the general thing, I I, I think that the Asian culture a little bit more deep in some point and a little bit more structure wise it and more have a longer not longer history actually more detailed and if you just see the paintings of japanese uh, uh, artists and so on also some arabic culture like persian culture is very interesting actually any culture is good and indian too but just uh, for me just asia is closer closer to my feeling mental mental thing yeah no no yet not yet but uh, you can write it down, uh, organic 2016 shoopware, and if we have it, you will easily find because we don't have too much of YOD. In Chinese, it's called, maybe we will not call it organic because it's difficult with all the certification. It will be called YOD Shu 2016. <laughs> it will have this name. I will bring. I also like it. It's pretty good, pretty soft. Yeah. Wild, it, regularly it's uh, some trees if it's growing in the wild or it's some, you know, tea forests. For example, what we have in Thailand is something uh, from this area. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, also some people call wild tea, like in Georgia, people call wild tea like abandoned old Soviet plantation. We also call it wild because it's like 50 years no one care about it. It's just a big uh, bushes like up to two, three meters high. It's difficult to harvest. It's almost like a tree, but before it was a plantation. So it's like deep in the forest and it's also kind of wild. Is it much different from uh, ordinary uh, corn? Um, it depends, you know, because uh, the same like with a very famous names of some teas. For example, we just tried Shenpur, which was written like 2003, but it's definitely not. It's like maybe 2013, maybe. But uh, still, with wild tea trees, also, it's so difficult to judge. It's so difficult to be sure that it's really like taken from the wild material. You must be, you know, this is why I traveled so long, and this is why I spent so many years in China, because you really need to control and you need to see. And after that, you have this feeling, you know, with taste and aroma from the wild tea, and you can recognize. Maybe yeah, you can see uh, the soil is important, and uh, uh, of course, age of the tree important. Anything is important. There is nothing that is not important at all yet. But still, you know, it's kind of a mess if you don't if you don't have a real like access to the to the trees to the. A lot, a lot, a lot, especially with the famous uh, brands and especially with uh, like uh, big names and tea, newly, like... Newly, uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, no, like a famous mountain, like, no, Lao Banjan, Lao Banjan village and uh, Bulanshan mountain, which contains also Lao Man Ara village and uh, Hakai village and some others, uh, like, yeah, uh, you know, these uh, villages uh, have some tea. And the, I have some videos, actually in my book, you can see there is a QR codes, which leads directly to the videos <laughs> of my channel. Uh, so yeah, you can find a lot of videos from there also. 
and uh, they have all kind of you know like <laughs> control points if you bring the leaves inside this area it's like banned <sighs> during the night you can bring or or you just can go forest road or whatever so i don't know so just to protect the geographical geographical um region uh, it must be original from this place uh, some uh, places have a kind of a mark, like a stamp, like, yeah, it's taken from that tree. But, you know, I, I, I don't care too much about this, because uh, regularly what we're doing, I'm going to not promote areas. For example, now we start, uh, I start brewing a Sam Thai Shen Puer, which is actually from our tea forest. Pretty good one. Uh, and this one, I believe, from this year, from February. We have it in stock, and that's from old trees, which I can be sure that it's from old trees because we have done it from our forest. We take it from our forest. So it's much lighter than the previous one. Yeah, of course, because it's a shen puer, not a shu. <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty light. It's really similar in some point to green tea. So this one, yeah, one of my favorite shans actually now, especially. We make some limited edition of uh, cakes of 200 grams from this uh, forest. Later it will be here around September, October maybe. Actually, there's a, it's a very big market. All these shan pours and all this knowledge behind and all these uh, famous terroirs and brands and some masters who do like special places yeah tea from that place or from this place or from that technology or this technology or this harvest and that harvest is there's so many discussions around and so many you know meanings and some points of view on it so it can be we can have like a separate uh, uh, testing only for shampoo and talking only about shampoo all <laughs> all day long yeah because uh, there's uh, also the types there's like gushu cha which means from ancient tea trees with dashu cha which means from uh, big tea trees or lao shu cha from old tea trees and also lao often use not old tea trees but old tea like aged tea and also will is like Xiao Shu, which means small tea trees, and uh, Shen Tai Cha, which means like organic or clean uh, Shen Puer, uh, Tai Di Cha, which means like tea from plantation. It's only the, how to say, the types of Shen Puer only. <laughs> also, Shu Puer often have similar recognition by material, but it's only we talk about the actually the origin of material. After that, they also have all of these types, like organic or not organic. After that, they have like kind of spring or autumn or summer harvest. After that, we have like minti, yomu yom minti, the define, which means in English, like, is it village uh, recognized or well known or not? Uh, minti in Chinese means of power of name, like brand, minti. Min, it's a, means its name, uh, and qi, it's like a qigong energy, like some of energy, which also can be uh, used in this uh, title not only like a qigong or but practice but also like a qi, like energy power <laughs> yeah so yeah how do you like this one yeah it's it's just it's my something i can proud of but Hopefully next year we even do better because we're still learning. This one I fried by I roasted by myself. <laughs> yeah, we only made around uh, 15 kilos. Uh, no, this is in Taiwan. This is Taiwanese one. Yeah, in China now it's impossible to travel <laughs> this year. Yeah, no. Maybe, maybe autumn will be possible, but now also possible, but with so little limitations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just uh, search the tickets like for 8,000 euro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, one way ticket. And you need, and you need to sit a month and a prison. <laughs> Not, but, yeah, it's going to cost like another probably 
4,000 euros. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 12,000 and you 12, and you have your one-way ticket to China. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> so not, uh, and also my thing that is time consuming because you have, you need to take all these Chinese vaccines. We don't recognize uh, any foreign vaccines, only Chinese ones. And you need to have a kind of um, a green coat and register it. And also you need to take tests uh, in some regions. It depends on the region. It can be like each day test or each three days test. So it's, really very complicated so it's uh, something i really don't like to s waste my time for it and money for s for nothing luckily i'm very lucky to have all these hundreds of connections uh, from my previous travels what kind of uh, certification do uh, chinese tea producers require uh, are they required to have to import tea? It depends. Uh, it depends uh, because regularly we do have a kind of standard European certification, uh, food security, and uh, it depends on uh, the requirements. Because, for example, I sometimes do export from the third countries, like uh, not only from China, and actually most of our tea not from China. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's uh, Thailand, Georgia. Japan, Taiwan, uh, which recognized in China as a China, but literally it's have a little bit more independence than China wants to have <laughs> to see. Yeah, yeah. Let's be polite. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here we are. Yeah, have one partner. Yeah, we just have. A, but this Dutch company is separated from any other companies what they have. So it's like a Dutch company have a Dutch residence. Yeah, so. Especially for that, <laughs> actually. Yeah, in, in, uh, we have, uh, for now, we have only one in Europe. But it's our first start and we uh, have a plan for franchising around you and I even have some certain agreements about it, uh, maybe next year. Because of current situation in Russia and some, because we all connected somehow and it's really, difficult for us now but uh, we try to take it still forward and also I have uh, still operating uh, but it's uh, run by my partners a big chain in Russia it's uh, almost 15 16 cities and 27 tea houses and bars so it's pretty big and this is why so we have we do have experience on, on building uh, these things but now, actually, like three years ago, I just understand and realize that Russian market is really small, and even the consumption of tea is big. But if you count as GDP, uh, Netherlands and Belgium is bigger than Russia <laughs> in the market value, you know. So uh, the amount of people is less, but the consumption and the um, check can be higher. So yeah, it needs to be developed. But uh, tea culture is not developed in you still. But I believe that in 10 years, maybe it will be the same big as in Eastern Europe. Because, for example, in Poland, in uh, Baltic countries and Czech Republic, it's more popular than in the Western countries. And even in France and Germany, way more tea shops and way more. Even uh, there was a Berlin Tea Festival. Uh, but I was surprised that no, no tea houses, only tea shops. So this is why we decided to start with tea houses. Yes, yeah, way more expensive to start, so you need to have a pretty big budget on it, but it's good, yeah. Do you know Tipco in Thailand? Uh, Tipco, it's like a, like a producer or a, or a retail yeah. chain? No, they have also coffee corners, tea corners. Oh, I no idea, because maybe they have like bubble tea doing or something like that, no? I don't know, they have the chai corner. Chai corner, but maybe. Yeah, but uh, I didn't, I didn't see it yet. Maybe because you know, I, I was in, in Thailand, in rural areas. The first, uh, yeah, we was in during first three months after uh, the conflict started in Ukraine, and and we just moved to, to Thailand for three months, from March, April, May, and we use uh, we we stayed uh, on Thailand uh, in islands, uh, so in Pangan Island and Phuket Island, and I don't was in big cities at all. I just was once in Bangkok for two days and after that also I was in a few times in Chiang Mai near our on our, on our forest in our factory but I don't was in big cities <laughs> uh, Chiang Mai Chiang Mai city 
Uh, and uh, my partner lives in Chiang Mai city, Leonid, uh, who actually run the project now in Thailand. And, uh, but our T4 is located in a village, in a very small village, Ban Lao. Yeah. In my, my, tang, my tang district. But uh, about retail chain of, I don't know, <laughs> I just don't, I don't research too much about it because it's uh, something a little bit different, uh, which is apart from what we're doing. And even here, like existing some chains of tea, tea shops, whatever, but it's completely different from what we're doing. And this is why I don't compete with this. I just, okay, let them do their thing, but we do some completely different. So this is why our, how to say, a, a regular marketing uh, competition not works for us because it's something different. We're building different consumption model, a different market. But yeah, so we have kind of experience and here, uh, so I'm now focused on Europe and focused also on, on production and factories and we have factory in Georgia and factory in Thailand. Maybe also later we have some land in uh, Japan. In Shikoku, we should just try because my friends have a land there. And maybe we, in Japan, Japan, Shikoku. And also, I don't know, maybe it's enough for now. Because still, as soon as China will open, I will need to spend half of my time there. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still more Chinese than, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we have a lot of work there. Also, I work on ceramic production like these cups and half of uh, what you see on the shelf is our own production. Yeah, it's in Moscow. There's some also Ukrainian potters. There's some Chinese. Uh, in China, we have a production in uh, Isin. It's actually owned uh, not by me, but I just uh, I, I'm employ free now at 35 masters who are constantly doing teapots like this. You see, it's all without with our logo, so it's all made by our order and this one too. Yeah, and this one also. <laughs> Yeah, it's in China. It's a Jinshui city. This is a Yixin city. In the Xin city, I have five or five workers who constantly doing by order for us. All they do, we buy. <laughs> yeah, because Japan, uh, we have some uh, very few, like uh, like Chawans, but uh, we plan to bring because you know it's very broad. Uh, <laughs> we have already pretty good assortment, so I just now focus more maybe on bringing a little bit more tea. A little bit more affordable to wear. Maybe next container will be like August, uh, September, something. But now we need maybe more even developing the culture and bringing more people here because it still need to be promoted. Yeah, it's still like we're really a little bit underground, not on the big traffic here, and so we want to attract some new people. And we why we do events like this and also music concerts and trying to participate a lot of venues and do some kind of tea catering whatever what we can have pretty good experience or participating in some festivals and so it still need to be developed why do you think not too many people know about the chinese tea I, I just needed me just need you know good things takes time you know <laughs> it's just need to you don't you don't you, don't, you need to have patience on this because in russia it takes me like uh, you know 30 years to build something and actually i don't push on the building more clubs actually if i wanted to spend more on that it will be like not 27 but 100 <laughs> but i just was in china for all the time and uh, my partners are uh, also push on me Sergio, let's open there pop on there i just no 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 no, no it's okay don't worry and and I, so we just was a little bit lazy in uh, scaling but the uh, possibility we had uh, but now, yeah, just uh, all Russian bees not operated, not by me, and uh, so it's like separate from here. Okay, so this is last uh, from this tea. We will switch to the next one. This is this was a Shen pair from Thailand. It's called Assam Thai Shen. We still we have it in stock if you like. Why do you think so? I have actually a friend in Milan. Uh, she have a kind of organic tea, tea shop, online shop. And he have at least 400 customers regular, all from Italy. Oh, right. Pretty good sales. Uh, and uh, she has, she had uh, mostly from Rome, Milan, and uh, Palermo. Uh, I, I was only once in Italy, so I don't know Italy geography nice, but uh, I do believe that it's like 
like this concept, what we tested here, I do believe it will work in any European city. Yeah. If it's Amsterdam is small, you know, it's only half million. But comparing to Paris or, or Rome or Berlin, it will be blooming you know, because it's no one doing this, you know, yet. 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 So, yeah, if anyone interested, let's talk. <laughs> it's possible. Okay, so next tea will be will be something special. It will be for my collection. It's uh, also Shen for, but this is or maybe not Shen. What do we have more? Yoji uh, Fucha. Let it be Shen. It will be Shen, but uh, aged Shen from Dinmai Mountain. It's called uh, Jinmai Shen Cha. Actually, uh, there's a funny story behind. Uh, what we just found, we was in a village uh, on Jinmai Mountain, one of the villages, where there's a few villages. Like the main village in uh, Jinmai Jen, Jinmai Jen, yeah. And also there is a few villages like Vinzi and others. And this village we just passed by, we make some filming there and, and we see some old people just sitting drink tea and they just see all where some Lao Wai, it's called like, like white people in Chinese. Not very welcoming name, but actually most of Chinese didn't mean anything bad about it. Just Lao Wai and uh, or Wai Gozhen if it's like more, more, yeah, more normal, <laughs> formal, yeah, yeah. And uh, they just see and call us, but because we don't want too much, I say, oh, we just, uh, yeah, we just pass by, but uh, sit down. And I say, okay, do you have something special like? Aged tea, and all the time I'm asking the farmers, do you have some lao cha, lao cha yo ma, uh, do you have any aged tea? And most of the farmers say, oh, we don't have, because actually, you know, all the farmers, we sell fresh, fresh tea, we don't store any tea, we don't have interest to store it. Mostly all aged teas can be found in collectors and some shops, whatever. But uh, they somehow said, oh, we have, we have something. And uh, she asked some friend to bring, from uh, the other house, the, <laughs> she ride with grandma rode, ride a motorbike and brought like a box, like maybe five kilos, and it was this tea. It's something completely special. You will try. Uh, this is something, uh, yeah, really good. And this is a good tea from old trees, I believe, because of the taste. And also, I think that I I bought it seven years ago, almost, and so for that time. I believe it's around 15 years aged, maybe 20. Sadly, we don't have it in stock. It's like my personal thing. <laughs> but I still have around three kilos <laughs> for uh, sessions like this. Sergey, where's the, the most of the tea houses located? In, in China or? In the world? Yeah. Or mine? Where, where the most, uh, of course, in China, yeah, the most, uh, but actually, uh, uh, yeah, I think Suzhou city, uh, Hangzhou city, uh, Chengdu city, actually any city of China have a lot, but some cities like very famous about the houses, like uh, also Xiamen city in Fujian province and uh, Chengdu city in Sichuan province, the capital of, uh, it's very famous there, popular also some, you know, the tea houses are very different in China, there's like, the tea houses uh, recognize it as a uh, folk tea houses. It's a very wide uh, bay, how to say, but it's very wild and rough in some point. So we have like kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, you can give uh, ladies there on the backstage, yeah. And uh, so it's like, um, you know, they just drink tea and smoke cigarettes and also eat some dried peanuts, whatever, uh, or some sunflower seeds, whatever. So it's like a very rough, <laughs> but uh, it's very good atmosphere there. And uh, it still exists a lot of Chin Chengdu, also in Guizhou province a lot uh, like this. Uh, also in Vietnam, a lot of tea houses similar to this. It's more, how to say, wild style <laughs> tea house. Yeah, yeah but... Um, spit, spit yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it, it not looks like a ceremony at all. Yeah, yeah. But of course, at the same time, you can find a lot of very beautiful tea houses, especially in Chengdu city, in Beijing city, in the capital. There's uh, even some tea houses, which is like a kind of art center. 
There is a one very famous, which is like 600 square meters, huge building. It's all two rooms, uh, as similar to what we have upstairs, but regularly they don't see it on the floor. It's mostly Japanese and Taiwanese style. In China, it's regularly like that, on the chairs. And uh, they do have a, a very broad uh, variety of two houses in any city, any big city. In Shanghai, there's a lot of... But also there's like uh, some fake, uh, you know, if you're in tourist areas from Shanghai, you can even can be uh, called for a, for a kind of tea ceremony for a very high price. Yeah. And they just do some similar moves. Oh yeah, with a tea ceremony, brew some shitty tea to you. And uh, yeah, and just uh, fool you with this. Uh, so it can be also found in tourist areas. So this is why actually I don't like big cities. I'm in China also most of my time I spend on, on the farms. I spend in the villages, which is why I have few videos from Chinese tea houses, but very few, maybe 10. But from plantation I have thousands of videos in Russian, but also we have an English channel where more or less about 150 something videos. But now I start filming uh, double. <laughs> I first film in English, after that in Russian. Each video I film I do both. Maybe Dutch next time when I finish learning. I have an idea to start Chinese YouTube because it's you uh, cool. We now start sales in China of our herbal teas because I have a big herbal tea production. That's very interesting, yeah? Very special taste. It's not looks like uh, most of uh, tea cakes you can try because it's uh, a little bit more delicate, not so strong. But uh, here you can see the difference between the tea which store it in a cake and which store it like a loose leaf tea. Because some people think that, okay, this is uh, like uh, Shenzhen, it's like a semi product. Uh, so this loose leaf uh, shampoo is a semi product, it's not a product actually. But if you compare, like take the similar, absolutely the same tea, like a like compressed tea and a loose leaf tea, and you feel very big difference, even if it, if it was the same tea, just uh, because of the type of uh, production. So we have the same processing, but uh, one is compressed, one is not. And it's also Shen Pu'er. <laughs> last, uh, last tea was also Shen. You see how wary it can be. So it can be like really like completely different tea. Which is why, you know, some people are really do drink like only Shen, <laughs> Shen only. <laughs> because it's, it can be from this to the lighter green and from more stronger aged tea, like similar to Shupuer, but it's still Shen and uh, to very, very light. And so it's very, very wide scale of taste, aroma, softer tastes, fragrances, whatever. Yeah. You, you say it's 15 years old, right? Yeah, it's around but this it still, age. It still has the, the fragrance of fresh. Yeah, a little, uh, a little, a little. Fresh yeah, it's just because of, you know, I don't know why, actually. <laughs> it is like this. Maybe because it was closed. I put it in a, I don't uh, store it uh, and just make it back and close it maybe one, two years ago. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, thank you. So with this we done or brew one more? Done. done. Okay, let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. This one actually also Shen, but completely different. You will feel like uh, way <laughs> the most <laughs> wary types of Shen possible. This is from uh, ancient tea trees, and this is called Shemalushan. Uh, I didn't recognize the first character. Who's, who can read Chinese here? Do we have some? We can read. We can, we can, Kevin, can you? Maybe you recognize the first character. Now, law something or I also have no idea. Vodka, okay. okay, we will drink next time. <laughs> <No. laughs>
Yo. Ah, yo le. Ah, yo le. Ah, yo le. Yeah, actually, there's a mountain. Yo le. Great, thank you. So this is like yo le shan. Yo le. It's uh, yeah, it's a mountain in Manhai region, I believe. And then it's a uh, name of the mountain in front. It means like the if it's uh, not, it's not by di chai. It's not a plantation tea. And you can easily see it uh, in appearance. I will, I will give you back now. You will see how good shan looks like uh -huh. <laughs> yeah so this is like yeah you can have a look it's from last year 2021 oh it must be something good i don't try it yet but uh, the aroma is really special actually regular vision pours is not for beginners so if not drinking tea for long, maybe it's like a little bit strange feeling because it's strong and also tastes a little bit not so sweet, more bitter notes and so on. But but yeah, let me we, let we go from not on the first floor, but on the 10th from the very beginning. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes even stronger from my personal feeling, but uh, you know, it really depends. Yeah, it's very sweet. It's a good one. I just recognize from the aroma of dry leaf. <clears throat> this, for my taste, I think it's Gushu, so it's uh, ancient tea trees. Because of such taste you can now feel, it's impossible to get from uh, the plantation bushes. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. At 40 highs really fits. <laughs> so this tea you will feel really like it's very different from the rest too, yes? It's also Shen. So this is why I'm saying that yeah, you cannot not be bored of diversity of Shens. Fifty shades of Shen. Yeah, easy, easy go. <laughs> Someday I had like really like around uh, 100 selection only of sand pours. Even here we have maybe around 25 <laughs> different. Yeah, this, one? Uh, this one sadly no, but we will now try one after this, <laughs> which also is shen, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's a very very special one. It's called Gaoshan Yunde. Actually, we have a similar to this one, also very not a similar, but but. Special. <laughs> How this one called? This, this is called uh, Yo Le Shan. Yo, it means Y O U, like you, but it's in Chinese, it's written, it can be written like Yo, yeah. Yo Le, it means like L E, Yo Le. Happy. Yo Le Cha. Yo Le Shan. Yo Le Shan Shan is a mountain in Chinese. So it's like a Shenpur from Mountain Yole. But we will have it here later, hopefully. Is it, uh, are we drinking on a setting or is it just randomly? Uh, we drink it randomly, I just see what we have. We already drink maybe like 15 types, even more, I believe. Like which five? Probably I've never been so high. <laughs> <laughs> Is. Yeah. China, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tea state. Uh, yeah, tea state. state. <laughs> Actually, which is why we don't need alcohol. Uh, we don't need anything. Yeah. You can uh, you can leave it on the front desk. Maybe people want it there. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you. Just. Yeah. Thanks. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we have some more. I can brew more. Again, when yeah. you have this approach of let's see what we have, you can call it in terms of roulette. Ah, uh, what? Tea roulette. Tea roulette. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, it, it is. <laughs> I'm still learning. Uh, Chinese, it's you, you never, you never stop learning, you know, because even, for example, yeah, I can. Italy uh, speak on that on the terms which is needed for my purposes. Like, okay, I can rent hotel, I can travel somewhere, I can take a taxi, I can take some food, 
I can buy tea, of course, and make all the shipping, delivery, and tea processing, whatever, which is all belongs to what I'm doing in China. But for example, if I go to some, you know, you know construction factory, hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, if you go to some construction factory, it will be very difficult for me to talk about, you know, you know, like some industrial machines, you know, like order it. If some people friend ask me, oh yeah, please buy some industrial machine. I, I can order it, but I can't go into details and uh, explanation how it works and so on. So some, it's all specialty or some chemical production, you know, for example. Yeah, for example, yeah, I can talk about some glazes, for example, because we do uh, have a ceramic factory. And uh, because I also relates to clay and uh, all these glaze, like yo yo in Chinese, say the same as uh, oil actually, <laughs> the same character, like like glaze. And also tai shao, it means like wood fired pottery tai shao. Can we also chai shao. mix all those uh, tea in one glass and just put it in tea? Whew. Welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you, you, you can. It's no risk, no risk at all. You can mix. You can mix it. Of course, just uh, the concentration. It's better to control. Uh, you can just you can control the amount. You don't drink too strong. But actually, I had a story that one guy on my terminal do like that. You see the wow. Let's try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I'm quite interested. But still, actually, it's a good tea, and it's. Uh, yeah, but it's pretty strong. <laughs> Actually, uh, we now drink like a clean tea, but you can do kind of uh, blending, you know, like for example, big companies, they do blends, but they use often uh, chemical or aromatizing of these blends. And this is my, why most of mass market teas are undrinkable because it's all chemical. <laughs> it's not the tea, actually. Uh, or it's very low quality, like summer harvesting or better technological processing. Yeah, all like, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's all finished. Yeah, can you please transfer to the, thank you very much. Sorry for, yeah, we will stop this. It still actually can be brewed for longer because the good tea have a potential to brew longer because it's, it's a very good material and it's, which is why you can brew it longer where soil is richer the leaf is more fat and the tree this is why the actually the content of tea trees why tea trees are more tasty tea because richer root system more no agricultural land so it means that the soil is full of minerals full of full of anything this is why it's very healthy actually also comparing to any any agricultural land now is crap any <laughs> because it contains no selenium not saying no any other micro elements which you need to take from my herb and <laughs> feed you or whatever so this is why all wild grown stuff is so high valued high ranked uh, actually we actually have very uh, at the same time we have very good uh, uh, trick on this we have our herbal mixes from all these eastern europe russia georgia whatever even chinese some uh, high mountains and they are all with our tea bricks so you can consume and it's still convenient and cheap and at the same time it's wild because it's uh, from forests it's not from the agricultural land and this tea even if it's herbal tea it really contains we we make analysis on that and it's sometimes 10 times more vitamins than any tea or like for example Iwan chai contains seven times more antioxidants <laughs> than green tea some types of or even mate, uh, what we have, Paraguayan mate, uh, on your root brand. It's also organic one. It's, uh, they call it like a responsible production. And it's also uh, very rich in components. Actually, now we also drink uh, Gaoshan Yunde Shan Puer. It's uh, Gaoshan, it also means high mountain tea. Uh, and Yunde, it's a region. And this tea is actually an example of uh, the tea which don't have any mean tea, don't have any power of name, actually. And uh, but this tea uh, is a very, it's crazy good because uh, this tea is uh, harvested from the trees at least 500 years old and older. It's uh, it's also wild and it's a special cultivar. 
There's a few cultivars which called Tenzi and also he, Da Hei Chai, we call it in Chinese, but uh, there is a more uh, scientific name for this, I forgot how it's called. But uh, Tenzi Cha, for example, existing only like few small forests of these trees. Uh, it's, it's a very rare cultivar. But this uh, also very special, you will try the taste. It's still Shen, but you will see how, how very Shen can be. <laughs> how different. This we have in stock. If you like it, I really recommend. It's not very affordable price, but it's incredible tea. It's something like my one of my favorites in all our collection. I even need to... Wow. You take it. It's still now it's a little bit soft. It's first brew. I need a uh, empty Gundao Bay. Yeah. A question? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You were mentioning the aromatized teas. Yeah. What? Could you briefly explain the processing process? Uh, the processing How do they do that? Uh, we had, uh, jasmine tea. Jasmine tea is actually what what we have. It's all nature, and it's very easy to do natural jasmine tea. <laughs> Imagine green tea and jasmine. Mix it, ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes uh, they put a little bit more jasmine, and after that, by the fans, they remove the flowers because it's not so heavy as a leaf, and they still keep a little bit of jasmine flowers inside the tea but the most adjustment were removed and also they sometimes use jasmine oil it's also natural so most of jasmine teas are not uh, chemical uh, most of but the mass production jasmine sometimes they do some chemicals but I'm not sure about that because because even we have some very affordable ones which is completely natural and it's even organic which was surprised I was very surprised because we do tests and I make a test on the adjustment tea and I think maybe yeah, it contains some affordable, how to say, reasonable amount of some chemicals which used for fertilizing, but it doesn't have any. <laughs> By the way, wait, what do you think about the water? Do you water, here we use actually the filtered water. Yeah, actually Amsterdam water is pretty good. Uh, and uh, of course, if you have possibility to take good water, it's better to use a, a soft spring water. Um, how does a middle middle mineralization? Uh, not too strong, not too soft. Uh, too soft will don't open up the tea. Too strong will make a rough taste. Maybe extract too strong. Uh, we do made research about water pretty pretty long because I have an engineer who had a very good experience in that, and we done a lot of tests uh, on water and how to make it, and we can can take distilled water and uh, make kind of, you know, uh, like, you know, like some components, yeah, like sodium, like uh, magnesium, and we just add it in water in certain amounts. And if we have kind of water, which is perfect for white tea, perfect for green tea, perfect for black tea, perfect for pours, perfect for ulons, and it's possible to do, because for example, coffee business, they do that. For example, you know, the coffee competitions, you live in Australia, you have certain water. You live in America, you have different one. You live in New Zealand or you live in Thailand or you live in Japan or in Europe. You have all water is different. But you go to competition, for example, in Milan. <laughs> and you want to take, make your coffee on it. But you don't have the same water. And this is why the coffee competitor, professional baristas, they have these certain chemicals, which you can take distilled water and this powder and mix it up and you have absolutely the same water in any point on the planet and this is very interesting uh, topic and we already started with research and we already made kind of mixes maybe later we will also sell them because it's cheap you can just take distilled water make a spotter because the spotter is actually like magnesium it's nothing special you just and you're ready and you have 10 liters or 20 liters or how many you want Leaders of water, which perfectly fits a certain type of tea. There, this way we do research. We do research on it because it needs a lot of experiments. Sometimes, like if a natural water is like smelly. Yeah, for example, yeah. Actually, uh, originally in China, you know, the Lu Yu, the master of the god of tea, who, who written the tea canon, uh, the first and famous book about tea almost a thousand years ago and uh, he do research about springs natural springs which perfectly fits kind of 
green tea which was existed in that era even now some tea already disappeared even some regions already not growing tea but still he written about a lot of uh, springs and actually traditionally in china the most available water for tea is a spring but this must be a certain spring which really fits this local tea or sometimes you know but for example in the northern territories when you have a winter time after spring came the taste of the spring is spoiled because of uh, of the snow you know start uh, uh, affecting the quality of water so this is why yeah we have these issues uh, i once went to the mountains and we uh, took no, no like water from the city ah. and then it turned out that the local like spring was really like smelly yeah Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. Sometimes it, it it yeah yeah yeah. Especially well, especially high spoil. yeah in high, high mountain areas. There also a problem. You often have this water from the glaciers, and the glacier water is also often almost like distilled water, and it's not good for mm. for your health actually. Uh, so yeah. You cannot brew tea, right? Yeah, you, you can brew, but it will be not so good. Uh, so. Uh, there is uh, some issues with that. So yeah, the water actually, also I, I do recommend you can buy like uh, expensive uh, water from the supermarket, like the best one. It can be terrible, but you can use it in some areas tap water, it will be perfect. So it's must, you must uh, make experiment and just choose in each city, in each, each I can't even recommend a brand because each brand also have a different water depending on the city <laughs> because they have a different you know sources for it so it's just all about experiment here we just have a good filter system and then just use tap water and it's pretty good it's not perfect but it's good but they have a professional filter not like the usual one it's a system so how do you like this one? Comparing to previous, is the previous better or this one better? This one is better. Yeah, oh, that's like good. Softer. That's good. That's for me. For me, it's like a honor because this is why actually one of my favorites. It's called Gaoshan Yundeshan Pur, and we have a little of it here, like maybe a few hundred grams. And it's very special. It's three years, I believe, three years ago harvest. It's a little bit aged already. It's good. And it's from Yunde region and I was really lucky to farm these guys because it's a village and it's a EU a small minority uh, of Yunnan province and it's absolutely not promoted area. Yunde region is not very famous and also this village is far from Yunde uh, count, county capital. It's really like one day drive mountain road and after that they still there is a place there is no road at all only motorbike. <laughs> road <laughs> and the actual trees in the, this area there's no road at all they yeah they're really clean and uh, yeah they have some kind of agricultural production in this area but uh, somehow these trees are survived because for centuries they harvested from these trees mm -hmm. and there is a like a tradition in china now you can pay to farmers like each year regular payment to have a right to harvest from certain trees and for the, this Yunde uh, village, I have this right. So we like each year we have few, maybe 40 up to 100 trees uh, from 500 to 1000 something years old, really big ones. I have actually videos from that area and uh, which each year we harvest uh, four or five types of tea from Yunde. Also, we do black tea from this, no more than 100 kilo a year. And this tea is all like 50, 100 kilo, 20 kilo, no more. It's limited. So this way you can ma maintain like the exact same quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also the farmers really value us because for them it's not a cheap tea. And for them to sell it's possible, but regular investors they do sell it to like local market and for more cheaper price. Because uh, these villages mostly like say guided by a big companies big, Ch big Chinese tea companies and they go there and pay them like triple time less with I pay so we do value us very low very very strong and even sometimes they do me kind of a credit and I not prepare the whole amount and they so we have a good cooperation for several years already 
and this is why I also want to get back to China because I still want to research and find more like that because for now it's like very few of uh, this quality poor we have, don't have an, a lot but also what we do now uh, make in, uh, in uh, Thailand it's also very special because we don't have so old trees there but we have even more cleaner forest because it's completely no agricultural land even nearby so it's like a, inside the national park we have 15 hectares of land imagine and before it was agricultural land but now it's there like a forest you know so this is why i value this uh, teas especially for yeah we have some cheaper production and some tea for plantations but i all the time saying yeah of course it's costs way more sometimes 20 times more than affordable tea but it's the same but with any product you know if you want to consume good quality food it not costs the same like uh, supermarket food you know how much is that one that you show you or like uh, what to say how much is that is this, this right? one is around uh, i believe around 80 euro something for 50 grams or 100 grams i do believe maybe yeah about for 100 something for 100 grams so it's more than 1000 for kilo but it's <laughs> it costs this price <laughs> because you know actually when you for example some people say yeah okay it's comparable per euro tea like costs 50 times more but <laughs> you have a special occasion for example and you buy like a bottle of wine for 300 euros and you don't think it's expensive and you way you spend a good time with your friends and you buy this great wine and have a good feeling but why you can buy like 10 grams of this tea it will not cost like 100 euro it will cost like 20 euro you know and you have a, the same quality of experience for 10 times cheaper price actually <laughs> so this is actually why tea is not so expensive at all comparing to amount of drink you have when i'm all the time talking because uh, i just now put 10 grams which is cost like maybe okay i don't know maybe 20 euros no more than 20 but we have like 15 people enjoy it you know <laughs> so it's it's not so expensive how you can think from the first uh, impression as i also said the tea from the old trees it's uh have an absolute different potential because as i already mentioned uh, the root system of a tree it makes it brings more components to the actual tea leaf and when you harvest it it can be brewed like we can brew and brew and brew already <laughs> like <laughs> we just stop most of the teas earlier than it have uh, yeah this is also actually one of the reasons but I previously mentioned that some of the people prefer to drink only Shen or mostly Shen especially rich Chinese people because they know <laughs> they know <laughs> how many agricultural fertilizers chemicals used in the mass production plantations and uh, this is of course an issue I, I don't like to say that yeah it's very bad for your health blah 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 because even if you live in a city <laughs> for one day cycling even here in Amsterdam it's low emission zone you still have something you know <laughs> but if you're like big living in a big city like London Paris whatever Moscow Tokyo <laughs> Shanghai imagine how many uh, chemicals you have only in air uh, regular air if you just live in a city because I was lucky to live a lot most of my time not in the big city which is why when I get back to Moscow I was born in Moscow but I raised in Karelia it's a uh, northern Russia territory mostly looked like Finland you know <laughs> so it's lakes and forests and no any and very good air and so on this is why when I raised I just also realized that Moscow is not my city like any city actually and I moved to China most of my time spent there and also other nature places and when I back to the city I just saw it I felt like uh, what is what is it I can't breathe you know yeah. and uh, and uh, yeah and and after that uh, you feel more connected to nature and you see how it's how it's really important to take natural food and it's not like only trend it's really needed now by all these farmers market here like over here like any saturday we have great farmer market nearby and uh i don't forget i, I don't know the name i just know that there's a fresh oysters which is like incredible with lemon and you just, i like it yeah, yeah. And it's fully packed all the time and we sold out all most of the time yeah because people just wait a whole week to buy the really natural food from them 
So tea actually, yeah, because it's tea is really undervalued because anyone know, yeah, there's like natural oysters, natural potatoes, same times more expensive or even wine or if cheese or whatever, but no tea. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it's just, uh, you know, no one know. Yeah, and I, when I just mentioned that uh, rich Chinese guys, because uh, then even one of, some of them, they have like, for example, in Thailand, they have a, uh, one, one uh, plot of land which was bought by Chinese guys. And it was very surprised because there is no, to be, not too many, uh, there's no factories actually. And they didn't cut the trees, they didn't, for example, we trim it a little bit the trees to have more leaves because we do kind of business on it, but they don't trim leaves at all. And this is why we also later on decided also not trim our trees also. And they have a, you know, from plantation like five hectares, we asked the local pickers and that picker said they harvested only like 20 kilos of leaves, imagine. It's like five kilo of tea only. And after that, I just recognized that it's a not a company board. It's like one very rich guy bought his own five hectares on land Imagine it's a uh, hectare can cost like over seventy thousand dollars for one hectare. So he spent really big amount of money to buying the forest to have this very low amount of leaves. Because if you harvest from a forest, you don't have all these huge amounts which harvest from plantations. For example, for around fifteen hectares, we sometimes harvest like 100, 200 kilos of fresh leaves, which is nothing like fifty kilos of fresh of uh, ready tea, which is why it's also not very cheap. But uh, he bought it by, just to, for personal usage, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, show you something, but how regular, regularly Chinese love uh, the tea, how they really care about the quality of it. Sergey, what's the secret of yellow tea? Uh, actually, it it's uh, it's uh, how it's tamlenie in English. It's like baked, but not baked. Tamit. Not to shit. Tamit. It's like, uh, you know, they rope in a paper and also kind of like stewing, but in even lower temperature for a longer time. For also like for night time, even sometimes it's like 10 hours or something. So it's... I know how to say that in Dutch, but not in English. Okay, how to say it in Dutch? Maybe in someone... Dutch I would say gepoofd. Gepoofd. Okay. Gepoofd the tea? No, no, no. This is the secret of... Gepoofd. Gepoofd. Okay. So... Hepoft uh, means like, uh, which is the secret of green tea, of a yellow tea, sorry. <laughs> it's just production costs. Yeah. Actually, it depends, because also it can be like uh, needles, you know, like it's called Juan Ya. It's the uh, Juan, it's a uh, yellow in Chinese, and Ya it's a bud. And Juan Ya, it's, uh, for example, Ho Shan Juan Ya, we also have one. I do believe we have here. And this is uh, one of the most, my, my personal favorites, uh, uh, yellow teas. But, uh, also, a pretty big amount of like Mendin Huan Ya and some other. This is like only bud, but there's also yellow tea, which is not a bud, but one leaf and one bud or two leaves and one bud. This one is cheaper, uh, but the production process is similar, but material is way cheaper. So, this is why it also the price sometimes will be triple times less. But the secret is uh, that um, not so many areas do this tea. And also, the production is pretty complicated compared to green and white. But actually, Oloon is way more difficult in production processing, but it's very cheap in harvesting. Because regularly, Oloon is not a hand-picked tea. It's a cut by machine, the big crop, and after that, they process and they remove the sticks. And they do have this uh, special long fermentation and, and breaking and fermentation and again roasting and again fermentation. I just show you this book with uh, 17 steps. Some of those is repeatedly, but like 30 steps maybe. Sometimes some is even 40 steps, imagine. So it's really complicated technology process, but this helps you to have, to do it not manually. Which is why some Oloons can be cheap. But with yellow tea, which is also pretty complicated processing, but it varies uh, harvested by hand, and it's very small amount of leaf, uh, small leaves, very small amount of material, and it's all manually. So this is why it's expensive, mostly. And also some teas are expensive because of the, how to say, the um, uh, promotion. Like, uh, for example, there's a very famous uh, area called Jinshan Dao. It's actually Jinshan Island in uh, Hunan province also. Uh, and this um, 
and Sneer or Yu Yang, I believe. You not Yu Yang, Yu Yang, uh, just uh, any uh, Chinese uh, already forgot a little, but yeah, the first region nearby, I forgot the city. Yu uh, Yang Shi, maybe, I don't know, but uh, still, this uh, Jin Shan Dao, it's a uh, I have also a movie from there, even in the book, there is a, a story a little about this island and the place. It's half a few small. Not the mountains, but uh, like cliffs or holm, how it's in English, you know, holm. Hill, hills, yeah, few hills, yeah, few hills. And these hills, they grow really limited amount of the yellow tea, which is called Dungshan Injain. Uh, so it's like, uh, literally can be translated as a uh, silver peaks from Dungshan Island. And this is uh, one of the most expensive uh, yellow teas. Uh, maybe even more expensive because it's production on only one island in only one factory. All the rest of Junshan engine, it can be also fine in any shop actually. We have Junshan engine, but it's all fake <laughs> because there's no natural Junshan engine can can be cost less than 100 euro for 50 grams. Can be if it's cheaper, it means that it's fake. The same as Lao Banjan tea from very famous village or Bindao. Uh, Shenpur from Bindao village, it costs really sky high price and it's uh, for my personal opinion it's overpriced just because of a, it's like Minty what I told it's just a brand name but not not a real actual uh, price of the tea because of cost performance <laughs> it's on, yeah it's just promoted yeah yeah actually iPhone costs <laughs> this price yeah it's it's cost for my personal experience yeah but still actually yeah Tesla. So, Tesla, okay, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the funny thing that Tesla sales drops after all local uh, European uh, factories and Koreans start manufacturing a lot of electric cars. Tesla, like, here, and he's seen it, Tesla, not so many. Yeah. So, uh, this will be last brew of this one, and maybe we will. Are you still okay? Yeah. Yeah? Still okay, it's still alive, so. We have few of, also few of good teas more. Uh, no, 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 no. It, uh, there are some some areas like uh, you know if you talk about uh, yeah, southern. For example, in Taiwan, there is a region called Nanto, and uh, they have a even variety called Si Dichun, which means uh, the spring of four seasons, four seasons spring. Wow. Or for example, Kunming, Kunming uh, city in Yunnan province also have a. Can how to say brand name of a city like uh, Eternal Ever Spring Ever Spring uh, City, you know Ever Spring City, and um, and it means like in these regions and could mean there is no tea, but it's like capital of Yunnan province, but tea on the southern province, but still there is a lot of regions which you can do tea all year long, all year long, constantly, all the time. So it's yet having a yeah, it's like each each ten, each twelve, each fourteen days, depending on the amount you harvest and the type and variety and term, room and temperature, whatever, you can still do. Maybe during rainy season it's a little bit worse quality, but still if you know how to operate with the uh, tea and know how to process proper, you can adapt even wet leaf to production. And it's and actually the gunfu the uh, actual in, it's often in English it's called Kung Fu, but actually in English it's called Kung Fu, it's not Kung. I hate all these uh, uh, wild jails translation. Uh, yeah, uh, trans yeah, yeah, oh, it's like, it's so stupid. Like when you go to Taiwan, you can read like Chia Yi, all this terrible sound yeah, yeah. crap, which is absolutely not Chinese, because it's not Chia Yi, it's Jia Yi. It's like no Qi Gung, there's no Qi Gung in Chinese. Or Qi Gung, Qi Gong. But qi gong, not even kung. Yeah, how it's often like kung, not kung, it's gong. And so, so it's, it, it sounds, if you know Chinese, it sounds terrible. And I didn't read, and I didn't read it, all this English translation, which is mostly taken from wild gels. It's like, ah, oh, it killed me. Cyrillic, it's good. Cyrillic is better, like palladium is better, but uh, better, of course, the pinin. Pinin is like number one the best and it sounds perfect and it really fits the real original Chinese sound. Yeah. So in a while just all this Shui uh, Xian will be like Shui uh, Xian or something like that. Yeah. 
all these Xiaomi instead of Xiaomi, uh, so it's like terrible. Oh, so, sorry, yeah, but I cannot mention they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Be Beijing, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Can you please tell us more about Kaizen, you know, the old, uh, when the tradition of uh, the tea started? Tradition, how it started? Oh, cha ji, cha cha! Kaizen or uh, Kung Cha or Cha Da or... Okay, uh, let me drink a little bit simple tea just to refresh and after that go up. We will try shrubware. It's I also don't tried it yet. If it will be crap, we will throw it away after a second brew. Uh, it's uh, like a sample. Yeah. So about the tea tradition, actually, uh, it's also a very very long story. I'm now almost done with the second book. It will take two years more maybe uh, because it will be bigger than the first one. It will be called uh, Tea Culture maybe. Uh, and it's focused on actually the topic what you asked about uh, tea traditions, also pottery capitals and the ceramic centers of China and the ways of consumption and how to brew properly, how to bring your audience and chassis and ceremony on a desk because what you see here it's not a ceremony at all. We're just talking and doing something because if you want to focus on a real like present in the tea of course it might be not so messy, it's more Zen style, it's more, you're more focused on not talking but drinking and maybe silently looking because I like these meditative uh, tea ceremonies which some masters do. I just have a little bit different uh, mentality and I don't, <laughs> I'm more, more passionate and not, so I can be like seriously brewing, but I like it. Some people do that and it's good. But uh, yeah, about the tradition and uh, when you focus on the history uh, first consumption was really rough what i just told in the very beginning and you it was like a, there was a tradition called ju chai in chinese like it's like uh, making the tea you remember that brick that's big big, big brick and then you just uh, do it like mm, with the oil and with the uh, fat and salt and it's not a, it was like a food it was a, like consumption consumed as a food it was not recognized as a special drink. And it slowly came to something like they just start very primitively do kind of a tea. Uh, they start like harvesting teas. Actually, the shampoo is the most ancient tea on the planet because you just harvest the leaves, a little bit wither it in the shade, like a few hours. After that, you just roast it, roll and dry. Mostly in sunshade naturally dry, not with a machine dry. So you don't need any machine at all. It's all manual. Only you have like this roasting big wok, like the same wok you prepare your food, the same wok you make in tea actually. It was in China for centuries. But uh, what's interesting that most of the tea production was concentrated of course in Yunnan province for very first period of time. And there was a not uh, big area of production uh, but pretty big amount and the, mostly it was not Chinese people it was small national minorities like uh, Yao, Lahu, all these uh, Dai Zhu and other Bulan Zhu and a lot of minorities Yunnan mostly inhabited my, my small minorities not Chinese and uh, actually they slowly start to promote it and it's we still start be a big trade thing for it was a chama gudao, it's called horse tea road, actually. It was not because the tea was delivered by a horse. It was also, but it was a trade tea for horses. Because China needs uh, horses for war. With Tibet horse, it's very strong and not very tall one. It's really like, yeah, very good horse. And these horses are fits for war needs, for war purposes. And they trade tea for horses for centuries. Even if they have a big like wars with Tibet or whatever, but still it's like uh, it was uh, for centuries. Uh, of course, after the revolution in China, all it was was stopped, uh, and after that it's but still Tibetans and Uyghurs and the Middle Asia and they consume a lot of poor tea and hai cha because they need it for because they have a lot lack of vitamins on the high altitudes, and slowly tea became something like like a drink, like a 
mm. also in Han China. But uh, first it was not a ceremony at all. It was like, okay, it's like a tea, it's like a consumption of drink. But because of that time it was difficult uh, delivery uh, for so long distances that it takes months, sometimes even years. Like why we have, we don't have green tea here <laughs> four centuries ago. How do you think why? <laughs> because it's <laughs> don't survive on a, on a way. And we need, it became fermented <laughs> on a way. Yeah, so it's no green tea here, only black. And uh, only later when it was more faster delivery start be possible, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and uh, slowly it became like a popular drink and uh, some emperors start to use a tea because they follow some Buddhist monks who use a tea, uh, Taoist monks also, for meditation practices. This is why it's so strongly, the culture of consumption is strongly linked to religious practices of China and Japan, also later than tea came to Japan from China, actually. As most of Japanese culture came from China and was changed a lot and adapted, but still. And uh, actually, uh, monks start growing tea a lot because we need this. And they start also experiment with uh, certain ways of consumption, some bowls and make it make as a part of a relig religious rituals because uh, actually it's organically just continuum of a religious ritual we consume tea and also it slowly became like a tradition of uh, rich people in china and they yeah great it's something special and it it also keep your mind clear but you concentrate you have energy from it uh, first it was uh, for practical reasons after that it also practical and aesthetic sides and also kind of meetings like uh, special talks uh, the team master was a uh, was needed for that because uh, team master present it properly and then during Tan, Tan dynasty Sun dynasty there was a very how to say very interesting ceremony which is absolutely nothing what we have now it's different they have more different uh, vessels for tea and you they have a powder tea powder which now we have a, as no as a matcha in, in japan but actually it was in china a thousand years ago but uh, it also was a small uh, tablets and they roll it uh, they do powder from it and they brew it in certain vessels and do use also whisk for it and so it's uh, interesting that now it disappeared uh, now some chinese companies do the same uh, sets Maybe, maybe I will bring later, but it's pretty expensive uh, because it's regular. If it's good one, it's made from silver, and they do sell it. Uh, so Tan Dynasty ceremonies, and the, but in China there are some clubs who really do only this Tan Dynasty ceremony and Son Dynasty ceremony. There are also even some some Taiwanese sects, uh, even uh, just like the KTVs, right? Uh, no, 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 it's different. It's not like KTVs, but. Uh, it's more for, um, you know, for more, uh, how to say, for a people who, people of culture. So it's not like KTV, it's like very special circles of art, Chinese people who like to do kind of, uh, you know, who cosplay on a ancient era, you know, they do. We do now film a lot of uh, traditional Chinese movies uh, about history and dressings and so on and uh, they do a lot of ancient Chinese culture culture we now try to um, how to say understand it for for uh, again like you know like rebuild it somehow and this is also part of this movement because uh, there's also um, Dao tradition it means like a Dao of aromas of this uh, all these uh, small pieces of wood of agar wood especially and there's uh, like uh, a lot of uh, story around this so it's interesting but uh, some people do kind of cosplaying of old uh, imperial times uh, dressing and rituals and uh, they also consume this uh, they also use this Tan dynasty ceremony and Son dynasty ceremony so it's it's actually a very big story behind and even some schools for that so it's a big big market in China uh, even for example if you want to learn uh, Chao Dao uh, or tea ceremony uh, or tea as it itself there's a three grades first is like a Chao Dao Shi it's like a master of tea ceremony 
the second is a uh, second is a uh, pincha sure it's a master of trying tea pincha which means like uh, consuming of drinking tea and the third grade is uh dzocha sure it's a master of chicken production so it's actually technologist of who can go to tea factory and do something from free release this is the highest level but also sometimes with highest level don't know how to do chada <laughs> so this is why yeah actually good one i thought is not so good but pretty good that's a shop where it's a shop i noticed that when you talk to uh, like ordinary chinese people and you start telling them about about like various kinds of cheese yeah they are most of them are unaware of uh, all, of all these varieties oh uh, yeah they actually don't know they yeah, actually, they actually know mostly they don't know, know they may know yeah. maybe most common thing like lunding yeah. uh dragon well tea or some tiguan poor they know the names but uh regularly they don't consume as a as yeah. we hear so it's also kind of underground in china but still it is underground that attract millions because there's a lot of chinese and it became became more and more popular and especially what i really do like that in in uh, regions that are tea growing uh, a lot uh, they also tea consumption is really high and also the youth follow the traditions they really build tea houses they open new tea factories they get back to villages to open new tea factories so they really uh, work on this and they don't just uh, randomly follow western uh, so trends in the north and they go slowly to the south um, it depends if you talk know. if you talk if you talk about uh, the ceremony itself what we have now actually it came from taiwan after uh, the revolution yeah after the revolution uh, mostly from taiwan uh, after revolution in China, then the old Gamindan party and a lot of people from Guangdong province and Fujian province came to Taiwan. This is why actually Ulun's grew there, because a lot of people from Fujian was the tea farmers. And they started tea plantation on Taiwan on Alishan Mountain in the 60s. Not so long story actually. They had some tea in Xinju district in uh, Muja and other regions of Taiwan before. But on Alishan it started the big production only like a few decades ago. Uh, but uh, actually now after a reopening of China, after re uh, reconstruction of Deng Xiaoping, uh, end of 70s, beginning of 80s, anything which belongs to culture, not only tea actually, anything, came back to China from there, do you think, from Taiwan? Yeah. mostly Very of course from Hong Kong and from Macau and from Singapore and from Malaysia from even America those Chinese who won't get back to China and there's a, not millions but I have thousands and thousands especially business people because they see the possibilities like huge market and there was already integrated in the Western world with all this production and all this manufacturing the Taiwan Gaussian port was not one of the tenth biggest trade imagine in the world taiwan small island 27 million population uh, yeah. Is yeah 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 <laughs> so this is loud and so the hundreds thousands of taiwanese businessmen go to china and one of those businessmen was one very great guy if i remind his name uh he was a friend of jen jimin the president of china and uh he opened chen fu chen fu John Tianfu, his name, John Tianfu. Uh, now I think, believe he is almost dead. He's uh, more than 100 years old. Uh, and I have almost, his book. Almost dead. Yeah, almost dead. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure, but maybe, yeah, already dead. Real. And uh, he, have, he had opened in the middle of 90s hundreds of tea shops in China. And also because he was a friend of President Jiang Zemin, uh, he had good relations with the Communist Party, uh, he just open uh, even the factories and universities for learning and training tea culture in china in mainland china and he was with first not only one after others start and some chinese also start but he was like a one of the I initial of this movement and uh, he still have hundreds of shops uh his company ten full company uh i was in a university in sichuan province for example they have a big museum of variety it's also a variety of teas we have a garden with a beautiful museum and so on so he done a lot for promotion later on of course a uh, lot of chinese copied and follow and bring new concept and so on so it's interesting 
actually, but uh, how to say uh, uh, this guy was one of the first. And actually, when I, some people say to me, oh yeah, in, 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 in Moscow we have a tea house open in the same year. And actually it now belongs to me. I bought it from the first founders, uh, Bronislav and, Le and uh, Mikhail Baev. Mikhail is now living here near Luxembourg. And uh, I bought this tea house. Uh, it's called Tea Culture Club, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he lives in Luxembourg, yeah. Uh, oh. Mikhail Baev, yeah. We, oh, we, I, I, I visited him. Uh, he still live in near Moscow, but not in Moscow, but <laughs> nearby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, actually, Leonid now lives here and oh, Mikhail uh, Baev. And uh, Mikhail, Mikhail Leonidovich <laughs> all the time. Uh, I have few interviews on my Russian channel with him, but uh, actually he uh, was one of the first founders and he opened the first tea house in Moscow after uh, Perestroika time. And it now belongs to us. So we have this more than 30 years history, almost 30 years history. But I'm joking all the time that the modern uh, ex-Soviet, how we can call it, tea culture is the same age that the modern Chinese tea culture. Funny, but it's true. Because it's not exist at all in the 80s. And very, very like, of course, we have all the rules and la 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 la. But no tea culture, a culture of tea houses, and their deep knowledge about all of these still mostly present in Taiwan, not in China. Yeah. But now, they, of course, things change. And we have uh, in Taiwan actually, one is, is, one is, a, why is a good source for knowledge and also the aesthetics of tea and the tea ceremony and all this why because it also was occupied by japan for 50 years and japanese bring a lot of their tea culture there so now it's like mix it of japanese and chinese and they taiwanese own culture all together so it's very very interesting story yeah this is why i really love it but this is a yeah it's another story <laughs> so guys i do believe that we had a kind of five hours ceremony almost uh, yeah we started two something 220 i believe now it's 520 so it's three three hours oh not fine Seven. okay let's do more in this case i have more tea let's drink one shan yeah <laughs> one more shan okay No, 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 this, this I already drunk before. Let's do try, okay, let it be like, uh, mm. yeah, we have one very good shoe with beautiful Chinese women hair inside. Yeah. Wonderful. When you, when you found the hair in Puer, you are lucky. <laughs> Put it on an altar and pray because it's uh, something which like, means that the tea is naturally done by farmers without too much of fertilizers uh, without uh, like very mass production without uh, equipment for removing all these hairs so it's natural yeah, it yeah. so value that please value that <laughs> yeah. sometimes you can find a cigarette if you find a cigarette filter even more the value of that yeah. because you can find it in only most expensive poor cakes on the planet you can find a cigarette filter because on the big factories it's impossible to find this such a value you know i heard the most uh, great story it's about piece of a finger oh, no. yeah like half of a finger dried fresh meat organic perfect and one of the actually big factory it was around 15 years ago. Now, sadly, I didn't find something like that. I didn't found any. You found one? No, found no, one? sadly, no. I'm still waiting. Sadly. Maybe sometimes it will be possible. <laughs> but yeah, now we... You're not so impatient that you want to volunteer a finger for it. Oh, you just not uh, receive the full amount of Dao you need, you know? You just yeah, yeah, yeah. not feel the real Dao. The real Dao, if you don't carry, don't care, don't care at all about this. It's good. It will come naturally. Yeah. It's someday later. It will be. Yeah. So the next tea, actually, we finished 
all the tea from the collection. We only have six from the collection and way more from my personal ones. And uh, this is Menku Lao Shucha. We have it in stock. And this is, I believe, one of the best shoe pours we have. It's a very good one. Very, uh, it's from 2005. So it's also aged and it's um, also uh, Cha To, which means uh, literally can be translated like uh, tea hats. And how it uh, happened? When you do watui, the big uh, wet pile fermentation of shupoyer, uh, there is an upper layer, a lower layer, sometimes even inside. The sum tea came like stick to each other and they have like a big uh, pile, or not pile, but upper layer of very strongly compressed tea. Before we just remove it and throw away. After that, they decided well, it's pretty tasty and we said, start break it for a pieces and uh, also sell it. Uh, so this is actually the Lao Chateau story. And now we have some of those also here. And it's from Menku region, uh, pretty good region. It's uh, there is uh, one of the biggest factories, uh, private factories, which is inter interesting, uh, Shuanjian Menku. Shuanjian literally can be translated like uh, two rivers, which called Jiang is the name of a river. Actually, the river is a ho in Chinese, but Jiang is like a big river, like a source of a huge rivers. Mekong, actually, Mekong River. It's nearby there. It's a cam, yeah, it's first it came from Himalaya, and after that it's go through China to Vietnam, yeah. Not only, even it's Thailand. Korea. Yeah, it's Korea. a, yeah, yeah, so it's like, yeah. so it's a very big, yeah, so this might be first brew we don't drink, and Next one will be better. Mm, yeah, Menku actually. Menku, the region called Menku. Menku, Shuanjian Menku. It's a Linsan uh, city. Menku, Menku. I'm so missed these beautiful places. But luckily we have uh, Yunnan in Thailand. The Northern Talents is almost like Yunnan. And we have uh, Northern China in Georgia. <laughs> because Georgia is almost like Anhui province or something like. Now I get back to Georgia in the end of July. Go there again to maintain the factory and to do some tea again. No, 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 of course not. Uh, Zugdidi, uh, Guria, our factory is in Guria, not in Ajaria. Ajaria region is also a lot of tea, but actually it's the Guria, for my personal feeling, is better because of the climate. It's a little bit, uh, f little bit moved from the sea. And uh, actually it's similar because Chakvi, it's Ajara already, but still uh, Guria region is the biggest in uh, amount of fresh leaf. And the is the center. Azugati yeah, is the center of tea production in Guria. And our factory is just located in Gurianta, it's uh, in Azurgeti city, village nearby. It's not a very mass production. Actually, this uh, factory we specially started not for doing like huge amounts of teas, but mostly for kind of experimenting. We also uh, do cooperate with local farmers too, like, yeah, it's interesting. And it's opened up slowly. And it's uh, also the difference in tastes uh, you can easily find uh, because of, um, because of region, the region also different. So this one is in stock? Yeah, this one we have, it's pretty good one. It's one of our best shoe pair, I believe. It's actually, it's Oliver's selection. You can honor Oliver for, Oliver for that. <laughs> Ask him to select the best uh, teas what we have. And we try it all of them here. And the, the factory in Georgia, your, the Georgian uh, production is for the EU market? Uh, not in, if Russian market also, uh, we do export some because it's very close. <laughs> it's like, Two days and you have it, and uh, three days, okay. With uh, there's like 
Georgian military road is very difficult. Uh, you know, well, yeah, it's called Georgian military road, one of the be most beautiful and most dangerous roads on the planet. Leads to like a so-called Asia or yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. It leads directly to south, south of no, not to south, through south Abkhazia and through no south, south Ossetia and, uh, and south Abkhazia. Uh, in Abkhazia, there was no roads you can travel. The Soviet Union, they built for like 20 years a huge tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's impossible to use now. Yeah. The tunnel that was used for like, the invasion. Like, yeah. The invasion. Now, we, I believe that uh, Georgian tea have very good potential and a lot of uh, uh, even European companies came there, came around. A lot of actually Russians who now immigrate in huge amounts from Russia during current issues, they also go to Georgia and they just... Uh, what does the tea sector overall look like in Georgia? Because in the Soviet Union it was strong... You know why? Only two types of tea. You know why? Because of the technology. They just do crap. Because yeah. the Soviet, pretty stupid uh, yeah. style of managing. <laughs> and please bring us more tea. That's it. They don't yeah. care about quality at all. So this is why local guys, what we do, the harvest crop like that, and the do process shitty crap. Sorry, <laughs> I can't name it any other. It's even don't call the tea. It was named co called like a tea product, yeah, yeah. and they mix it a little because uh, there is a big port, Poti, in Georgia, and they receive kind of. Indian tea and even Turkish uh, by road they bring there and they mix it with Georgian and so on Soviet market a lot but mostly there was some corruption around and they even don't mix they sell separately good Indian tea for high price for some chains of supply undercover chains whatever uh, for a higher state officials yeah yeah thank you Спасибо. Thank you. See you. Okay. <laughs> For those who left, we have a best tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I talked to an ex-prisoner of uh, Soviet, like he was a prisoner during the, so uh, the Soviet era, and he said that uh, Georgian tea was like the worst. Yeah, it was the worst tea. tea uh, it was the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there yeah. was only two options. Yeah, only two options. Georgian or Indian. What's the best option? And, and actually, the reason why Georgians uh, stop pr producing uh, the big amounts of teas because it was only for Soviet market. And the uh, first president of Georgia, Gamsakhurdia, who actually. I don't like to talk about politics, but uh, even some Georgians don't like him for certain reasons because he was like very strong nationalist. He started, okay, let's disconnect, destroy any relations with Soviet Union, blah, 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 with, with Russia for that time. And, and uh, they start somehow build a, building a kind of independency, of course, same time uh, there start a war in Abkhazia and so on. And it was a very messy time. Uh, for any uh, ex-Soviet uh, territory, but for Georgia it was very painful for that time and they don't care about tea in this period It was very difficult to care about tea and also because tea was uh, mostly consumed by Russians So okay, let's go something else But something else somehow also was not very needed on the market because there was a big competition in European Turkey and so on like fruits and whatever and uh, now more and more especially uh, present government of Georgia really do support a lot, uh, do a lot of efforts to support farming of tea. And they really even help with machinery, uh, do some programs for land, uh, for easy or cheap rental of land, even free, you know, even ownership of land if you do some business uh, of tea. So a lot of farmers start to do tea again. For example, last year on 15th of July, I was also there in, near our factory and we just established for that time. And uh, they make a great um, Gurian, Gurian uh, like tea road uh, festival, like a big exhibition. Um, few, de few decades of participants, like maybe maybe 30, 50 participants. Uh, small farms, big companies who promote, who, who produce the tea. Uh, and more and more they do pretty good quality loose leaf tea. Wait, Chinese help them bring Chinese machinery, Japanese also bring some 
so I be believe that uh, if they focus on a good quality tea, not on the mass production, uh, it have a future. And uh, we also want to be part of the future. <laughs> Uh, they actually, actually, there's also the same quality, even even sometimes a little bit better because it's northern and it's more colder. Means grow this bud grows slower. Means it more components in tea leaf. It means the tea's quality is a little bit higher. Especially there's a very good tea in my cop region and Adigea, Republic yeah. of Russia. And but there's a <laughs> you know it's like it's very 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 small amount. Compared to Georgia, it's nothing. It's like maybe 100 times less material. So this is why we stop in Krasnodar. Not only one reason, but <laughs> this is the reason can't be mentioned, you know. And uh, so uh, we do just uh, now repeat the same technological processing that we do in Krasnodar. We do in Georgia and it will be like similar tea. Uh, so material is really similar. Yeah, but uh, even in some point, maybe I was not so right about like it's better quality in Russia or not. But it's, it's, it's a bit similar. It's the same region. It's like if if it, if we have like not this problem with Abkhazia, we can travel to Sochi like in few hours. Yeah, few hours. It's the same climate zone. Yeah, you can, you can also try if you like this. Yeah. More than any other, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, it's uh, mostly if you have a tea bushes, and if it's okay for them to grow to grow here, and it's the soil is okay, the climate of course affects a lot, but technology affects more than climate. So the cultivar, the soil is more important, and the technology. Uh, so if it's like your temperature is like a little bit colder or hotter. It's of so effect, but not so strong as a soil and cultivar and the processing. Because, yeah, uh, for example, yeah, in India, some people do like start process the tea also in Japanese and Chinese technologies. And this tea became competitive with Chinese in quality. Of course, it's still more expensive than Chinese, but it's still something. It's very more different. If you take a regular Assam tea and like Assam, which we use a Chinese machinery to produce. But what about it, the, the Indian tea? I think it's uh, in general, it's, poor quality. It's like, general, it's, I don't like it. You it's know. better than the, the Turkish tea, of course, but yeah, it's yeah. still a very poor quality. The main thing that if we yeah. talk about cost performance value, it's absolutely can't compete with Chinese. From my personal opinion, of course, some people do like Darjeeling tea or high quality Assam tea, There's but nothing to I, I would, now my, 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 my partner, as I told in the very beginning, she spent one month in Assam and she uh, take a lot of samples from Assam production guys, uh, some pretty good, pretty good and I like it even, but uh, maybe we bring something, but still, you know, if you have so big selection and you have to your own factories which you literally can do anything we don't need it too much because it will be more expensive not so convenient to have to bring actually georgia why it's so good is logistics is closer to europe so it's cheaper and faster and uh, this is why we have fresh tea from georgia like on the next week you know here and it's good we have like good green tea good red tea of this year harvest very very tasty actually especially wild i can recommend yeah so this is uh, what we have Okay, guys, I think that we need to finish because really like it's uh, almost four hours and I had a good, I have, I hope you have a good experience. Yeah. Thank you very much. I see your bright eyes. So yeah, it's, uh, it's like you're very, the best advertisement of tea, like film you in the very beginning and uh, feel your smiles now and it will be a very big uh, difference. So yeah, thank you very much. I hope we will do again uh, in the maybe end of July and beginning of August. I will be here again and we will drink some fresh tea from Georgia. Not only, we will bring something. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, great.